<laughs> He's the latest sensation from Australia, Guru Glenn Cooper, and he's changing lives with a brand new fishing show. Fishing Guru Glenn Cooper. with that's the thing about fishing. Well, welcome to our second show. Anyway, last week was great, wasn't it, boys? It was. Oh, it was fantastic. No, no, I'm going to do an introduction. You just be quiet for a minute. I'm going to do Nui first tonight. Oh. No, no. <laughs> this is Nui. Oh, say hello, Nui. Hey, hey, hey. No, no. Why do they call you Nui? I already asked you that last yeah, week. Don't worry about it. And, of course, we got Kommy. No, I don't know why we're calling Kommy, because Kommy just doesn't sound right. It should be Kumi. Yeah, you can probably do that if you that like. That sounds better. Probably, yeah. Say hello. G'day, fellas. Anyway. Just like right. Good. Yeah, good. You alright? Not yet. Oh, shut up. <laughs> anyway, last week was a great show and there was a great response. And I mean, thank, thank you for the audience for our first show. Um, it was fantastic having Paul Hardy Smith here. Absolutely. That Vet was great. Veterinary scientist told us a bit about Snapper. It was pretty good, wasn't it? And we learned a fair bit out of that, too. Mate, right. yeah, no, we, we did. We actually learned quite a bit. Right, and look, that's what we're here for, right? We want to be educational. We just don't want to be a normal fishing show. No. Right, that says, right, oh, yeah, fishing's a great part of it, and that's what we're all, we all love our fishing. But we don't want to be sitting there saying, oh, this bloke caught this fishing. We're going to have some of that here tonight. Sure. You've got yeah. some photos later yeah. on, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. During this section, isn't it? Yeah. Good. But um, yeah. that's the thing about fishing, really, with, you know, like I've been working with uh, mental illness and kids and things like that and that's what we're about is actually taking fishing to a different you know, to a different um, level and playing field and everything like that is actually working with using that's the thing about fishing with working with mental illness and things like that and uh, we, one night we're going to actually sit down and talk I've got uh, actually one of the people that's very heavily involved is a qualified psychologist who loves fishing and we're going to bring him in one night and he's going to have a talk to us about things but um, as we go through this, our little journey here with That's the Thing About Fishing, we're actually going to sh show um, uh, some people that we know, something. bring them along, That's right. right? We'll even talk about some of the things that you've gone through. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. we'll talk with depression groups, because um, I, I use fishing with depression groups, men's, men's groups, uh, dads in distress, right, which I've made a, con um, a contact in there with. Um, men's issues, men's health, suicide prevention, and using fishing, because we all love fishing. If whoever's out there tonight is watching us, it's because you love fishing. And the people that I've got guests coming in tonight, they all love fishing. And they've all got different areas that they work with in their, in, in their organisations, whether it's, you know, like I said, we've got Regal Marine, we've got the boys from Snapper Point Angling Club coming in talking about the Tea Tree Festival. You know, I've been honoured by Steve and Bell because Steve's a good friend of mine and um, they've let us use Bell Marine, right? I just got a glare from Steve. He says, you were a good friend, Glenn, and you said my name. Exactly. So, anyway, Steve, just sit in the background, be quiet, please. Right. Now, I'll, I'll throw him out. I'll sort him in the dunce corner. But uh, don't... It doesn't work. Don't start. It doesn't work. I need batteries. Uh, what was this? Your shape. Your sack. Oh, I'm sacked. Oh, right, see you later. <laughs> right up. Anyway, see what I mean? Even the audience want to get involved, which is great. Anyway, what we're going to do... Let's do something a bit different. We talked about well, this is a fishing show, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring up Nui. You've got something to show us, haven't you? We've got a few photos that were sent in over last week, and then um, uh, about all the fish that were caught, and we're going to sort of give away a prize tonight for what we decide is going to be the best pick out of the lot. That's right. 
Anyway, so who's the first one we've got up? Uh, we've got Alan, and um, I'm not sure where he's from. He's got a 5kg snapper and 18 oh, metres. I hope it wasn't a bloody tr no. uh, trout. Well, <laughs> that's, that's, that's our right there towards probably maybe uh, Seaford Way. Yeah. Carol, yeah. 18 metres water, the so yeah. And then we've also got uh, Muhammad. He's got uh, a four to five kilo, uh, I mean, yeah, four to five kilo and around about four metres of water. And we've got Sean from Sandy Rock. Um, uh, Stan, eight metres at uh, um, Altona there, he's got a four kilo there. And then we've got the boss and 17 metres of Frankston. I oh, know, our, so, our stomping ground, Frankston. Right, so. Oh no, we started the game. <laughs> so, right, anyway, did you work out who's going to get the prize? Uh, I think I have. I, oh, Come on, you don't get away from okay. I, I reckon the land base. I, I think so. I think so the land true. base. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I mean, the last few weeks, the actual land base guys are, are really terrorising those snappers out there. Those poor bodies are struggling, but the land base blokes, yeah. thumbs yeah. up to them, I reckon. Catching, thumbs so up to them. Well done, boys. Up. Keep land it going. Boat. So who was our land base fisherman? Um, hey, hey man, um, you've got the cue card. We can't yeah. sleep. That right that's Sean. 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 Well done. Congratulations, right mate. So, what did he won there, mate? Right, on. we wrote this down, didn't we? Thank God. Yes, we did. Locked Thank God, we did. Well, we got a bag of Bite Me Burley from Launching Wayne, right? A land-based rod holder from Regal Marine, and a sports fish DVD from Yip Yip Fish Toy. <laughs> Unbelievable. There you right go. On. Hey. So yeah. Anyway. That's great, mate. That, yeah. that was our first time we've had uh, fishing photos up. Ah, that's right. that's, yeah. that's good. That's keep spot. sending yeah. your photos in, guys. Yeah. Next uh, week, it'll be your turn. Really? Just keep right. sending it in. I'll tell you what you do. If you look for me, Guru Glen, or I'll tell you what, Port Phillip Bay Fishing is a great place because I actually look at that actually, all the time. What? We've got a, we've got hey, a Facebook hey. page. We have to. You've set that up to the top. That's right. We did the other night. We've got a Facebook page. Right, what's it that's called? That's the thing about fishing. Right on. Just go on there, post your pictures, and uh, we'll uh, drag it out, and uh, Nui will take care of the rest. Yeah, right and on. it's not necessarily the biggest one that gets the prize. No. Know, and it's not, not just snapper, anything will do. Can I enter? Well, well no, yeah, let, let it go. Yeah, yeah. Give him a we're go, safe, you know, because you know. We're safe. Have you got tissues? <laughs> Why? Because you might need it tonight. What for? Well, Nui's yeah. got something in surprise. Really? Yeah. What do you got? That's all right, man. Oh, <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do at the moment, this is our little section. What I want to do is I want to go to a, a quick quick ad. That's the thing about fishing with Guru Glen. And we're going to come back, right, with a report from Dom over in Warnie. And also then we'll come back with Russell and Greg from Snapper Point Fishing Club. Yeah, the tea tree boys. The tea yes. tree boys. Well done. Awesome. So, oh, that'll be awesome. Very right, interesting. So, anyway, we're going to cross to an ad. And we'll talk, come back to it in the sort of time. Absolutely. G'day, I'm Paul from Mornington Boat Hire. For four hours, $90, you too can come out fishing on a boat. Either a polycraft or a tinny. We'll get you on the water and we'll get you on the fish. This little beauty was actually caught out on Mornington Hire Boat, so thank you, Paul. I keep fishing affordable, so don't get stuck on a pier. Come down to Mornington and I'll get you out fishing from here. In a world full of quality TV, award-winning screenplays, and really attractive people, comes a show with... None of that. Coming soon.
caught it on Seaford bait. Welcome back to Guru Glen. That's the thing about fishing. Before we cross over to the... Jeez, I like your shirt, boys. Thanks. The new ones. Yeah, yeah awesome. right. that, that, geez, they Got the racing cars Mate, already. Someone was go. supposed to bring me a shirt in tonight. Or oh, the Guru well, shirt in yeah. tonight. Yeah, and, um, exactly. But mate, we'll, I actually we'll get had, back to them. I only had the singlet on. And it's lucky that I outsmarted the bloke that was supposed to bring it in. And I've got a shirt. I've had one in the... Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to cross over to Dom first before we come back to you two boys. And we're going to get a fishing report out of Warneet. So here are Dom. Hey, Dom. How are you, mate? Good. How are we going, mate? I snuck up on him. <laughs> How's things? This is Dom from Warneet Bait and Tackle. As we're going to do, we get every week we're going to cross over to Dom. I think we're going to do it live now because that that Nui doesn't know how to use a phone, so he's not a good receptionist. <laughs> no, so you I thought, train him. <laughs> well, no, 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 he's a, he's a Kiwi, he's a good mate. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I thought we'd come over to see Don direct. Right, Don, what's been going on already? Any fish being caught around this area in the last week? Yeah, we've had a few uh, good days and a few bad days, obviously with the, the way the wind's been going this week. On Saturday we saw a few fish we had a comp on, oh, and right. uh, we saw a couple of fish come up from Joe's end, all the way up to the top end, Holtons, vouchers, a few pinkies from the mouth of Lyles Channel oh, as well. Um, heading more down towards Crawfish Rock, between Crawfish Rock and Eagle Rock, in that 17 metre to 26 metres, we had a few fish come from there. Um, I had a chance to get out Saturday, take my son out on oh, Saturday really? night. He, he had called me. He, <laughs> he had a comp on, uh, it was worn out against Tururu. Um We sounded up from Crawfish Rock headed towards uh, Long Reef, yep. through that sort of area. We sounded up uh, a few good fish on the bottom. Uh, we ended up with only one of six three, and dropped three others, one at the net that looked a little bit bigger, but uh, it pays always to check every knot, line, uh, the whole lot. A, fr a mate of mine, his, uh, his line wasn't too crash hot and uh, he was devastated. Really? Absolutely. It was his PB, but then we got him his PB after that. Oh, really? 6'3". 6'3". Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good fish there. It was it? a good fish. So yeah, with the high lows, it, it allowed us to fish a lot deeper water. We fished 16 metres. Oh, really? And we are only running four ounces. The same with this week. You can fish the deeper water. Oh, well, while you're talking about that, yeah. let's go and have a look at the tides for next week. Well, coming up during the week, yeah. you know, coming up for the weekend sort of thing. Yeah. And talk about you know, what it's going to be like fishing out there then. Right, Dom, we've got the um, tide chart up. Explain a little bit about the tides and what people... And actually, this weekend you're saying is actually going to be a good time for the amateur fishermen out in Western Port. So have, explain why. Well, as you can see, the tides here is 2.6 metres on the high and low is 1.1. So there's not going to be much flow even till the afternoon of the high of 2.5. So you're looking at just over a metre. Same with Saturday and Sunday, Monday, changes from three metres to 0.9. So that means it's gonna be a bigger tide. It's gonna run a lot faster. So the evening tides are 2.7 to 0.5s and 0.4s. So during the day, it's good to fish the deeper water because it's less weight. It allows you to run your fours and five ounces during the day and you can burly a lot easier. Right, Dom, that was good about the tides. Actually, I learned a little bit about that because I've yeah, because I'm not a Western Port fisherman, I'm mainly been Port Phillip Bay, but I want to start coming over this way because if I'm going to be, you know, do all these TV things, I've got to learn both ways now, don't I? That's right. Right, hey, listen, what's a, what are they going to be the best days for the weather, do you reckon, this week, or this week coming up? Going by the forecast today, but for the next few days, it's looking like Saturday's probably going to be the pick of the day. It looks like Sunday up is going to blow up, and oh, maybe right. even Saturday night. But the forecast, we have two to three forecasts a day. Yeah. So it's... Good thing to just give us a call, and we can we can go through the weather and have a look which way the wind's going, the, the direction, and where people can be protected from the wind, 
Talking about call, what's your number here? 59987163. Now we open at 4 a.m. in the morning, so people can call us nice and early before they go out. He gets up just as early as I do. Well, some of us have got to do it. Uh, some of us have got to do it. Yeah. But that's great. Now listen, that's a little bit of a report from our here at Warnock, Bait and Tackle. Hey, you got to give me some um, snapper eggs to give away, aren't you, this weekend? I'll this give week. You, I'll give you the magic colour for this week. The magic colour? The magic colour. The one right. we caught all our fish the other day. All right. right. Is this one right here, this blue. We find the blue, for some reason, work really, really well out here. Oh, really? I think when I put a piece of pilchard on it, it, it actually presents a lot better. Oh, right. So that's great. So anyway, this is Guru Glenn with Dom out of Warnie Bait and Tackle. Come out here, like, and if, you, if you're if you not sure about what is going to happen, what the weather's like, or the tides and everything, just give Dom a call, right? Eh? We'll stick his number up on the screen a couple of times, right? Eh? Or you can go to his Facebook page, Warnie Bait and Tackle, that's on Facebook, and just, just check with, you know, like, always be safe than sorry, right? Eh? And we'll have a few snapper catches to give away this week. Anyway, let's get back to oh, what we've got. Before oh, you whoa. forget, I've got one little thing. What's that? Carl needs a new microphone. Oh. So <laughs> we'll give Carl a new microphone. Mate. That way he doesn't starve as he's talking. Right. Uh, <laughs> mate, that still won't shut him up either. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Guru Glenn signing off from Warnley Bait and Tackle. Catch you next week here. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to Guru Glenn, and that's the thing about fishing. We're actually live from Belmarine, as you all may know, because there's a sign sitting right there and says it. Right up. But anyway, <laughs> hey, guess what? I got a present for you. Kirby. Kirby. You know what <laughs> yes. It is? No. What is it? Your new microphone from Dom. What? A chopper chop. From Dom? Yep. And uh, is it wireless? Yes, wireless. Wireless? Yep. Awesome. And tasty. Tasty. Right. Hello, test, test. Hello. Oh, mate. Well, I so might as well give this a crack. A crack. You know hey, what? what do you reckon, fellas? A new microphone I've got. Awesome. Boy, you know. Thank you very much, Dom. I might have to take this on board and uh, take it around with me. Just don't you know, hungry. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Mate. This was a big, bit bigger than because I know where I'd like to crack it. I bet. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, we've got a couple of guests here. We've got Greg yep. and Russell from the Tea Tree Committee. Welcome on board, boys. Thank you. And your, um, the, your position in the Tea Tree Committee? Um, I'm, I'm on the Tea Tree Commission, I'm the chairman. Chairman. Um, I was the. Big Kahuna. Sort of not. Yeah, so I want to make sure you put all well, the we, chairs we out for everyone. We actually have. Yeah, that's about it. So just going to sweep the floor at the end of the night. <laughs> we, we don't just have a committee in. That point because it's so big, it's too much to do at once. So, we actually also have a tea tree committee in the club. Oh, right. Where just a certain amount of people run that committee, run the tea tree for the year, you know, mm -hmm. organising sponsors and food and, and whatever you've got to organise, that gets done separate because it's just too much for one committee. Mate, yeah, because from what my belief is, it actually started about 31 years ago or something like that. Yeah, correct. And it started off with a, a very a you know, very small amount of money, very small amount of prices, and it built up over the years, didn't it? Because I, I can remember years ago when you know, um, the end of the weigh-ins and everything like that, it was all down at the, the um, park and everything. And, uh, and that's yeah, great. Now, it's, now you have your presentations and everything at the race course. What, you know, what else? Can, you know, tell me a little bit about what the, how, how you organise this competition. Well, because like from, from the start, from the very start, it was just four or five blokes, who, just like you guys, who decided they want to go fishing. They want to just go have a bit of fun. In those days, you could do it, have a couple of beers on a Friday night, go and have a couple of, do a bit of fishing. And they thought, this is, this is really working out good. People started getting interest, and every Friday night they met. Before we knew it, they went, let's do a fishing club. And that's actually how it started. Yeah. It was just for guys to get out, have a bit of a social life, because things were hard in those days. Everyone was working hard, and there wasn't much money around. So it was really good to get out on that Friday night and get together, and it just went on and on and on. And, I can remember being down at the Moynton, um, the little over there, and we had you know, 300 competitors, 200 competitors, and we're panicking, oh my god, we've got to get food for this, and prizes, and whatnot. And it's grown into a family club. Yeah, There's lots of family great. members. While we have on the books 70 odd members, each one of those members could be a family of five. Yeah, so it grows from there. Yeah, no, and, and, and it's also keep on growing as well, isn't it? 
Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. we're pushing at the moment. We'd like some more members. I'd like, I'd like to get some some younger members in, you know. The, the, the young fellas are getting their cars and boats these days and they want to get out there and learn. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of guys that have got a lot of info they can hand out, if, you know. They can just mingle a bit with some younger guys. Because yeah. you can get caught up in too many yeah, no, getting I'm, old, you know. Oh, look, I, I agree with that. And, um, like, we had Paul Hardy Smith in here last week, you know, a vet scientist who's actually been um, an advisor to your committee now, what, three years? No, he's been well, fantastic. He's, yeah. he's, he's come down and given talks at the club. It's been That's really right. good. Yeah. Really and informative. It, and it's great because what I, what I like about the tea tree is that it's a competition where it's not the biggest fish that's going to get it because we all want that big prize fish. We want that PB. We, you know, we, we all do it. I'm, I'm the same. You know, like, you know, on the pier, I, I want to get because I'm a mad land based bloke. Right? But on the pier, you want to get that PB. But you've taken that, because there's still competitions out where you've got to catch the biggest fish. And it's great that we can actually start educating, and especially clubs themselves, to start educating their members, the future members, the kids and everything like that. And as you said, you've got a lot of competitors. Start teaching them, right, that it's not the big fish that's going to win, right? You've got a size limit, right? Oh, no, yes, you... But um, your big fish, there is a prize for the big fish. There is, fish. it's the bragging rights and you get yeah. the wooden carved trophy. Yeah. That's, that's right. And you get the glass case, you know, that's yeah. nice to have on your mantelpiece. Yeah, well, of course. The of person course. who catches a one kilo fish or a ten kilo fish can also win the boat. That's exactly that's right. That's the big prize. And you can't cheat that way. Yeah. So it's, it's a total random capture. So it takes all the cheating out of the comp and keeps it as clean as we can possibly. Oh, so means I can't go and get one of those fish for the fish market. Sorry, mate. Uh, 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 I was going to cheat this year because I've had it. <laughs> we have fish inspectors uh, no, no. there on the day who yeah, look, at, yeah. look at all that. No, which is great because I've, yeah. I've been told that as well. Um, the, who's the one I can ask about what's going on at the way station and where the inspectors are going to be and things like that? Yeah, we'll roughly look at all that sort of information. Yeah. Well, okay. well, Russell, can you tell me this? Um, we've got the, it's over the Melbourne Cup weekend. So we've got Friday starting at 5am in the morning. We're going to have wave stations at uh, Caron boat ramp, um, Hastings boat ramp and Mornington boat ramp. And they'll be open from 9pm through to 12, midnight. Right. It's a bit of a carnival atmosphere. The yeah, boys down there have a bit of fun, have a laugh, you know, great chat. A lot of the guys come in and weigh their fish and hang around for a couple of hours. Yeah. And, yeah. So it becomes a really good social party, yeah, social yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. Everyone that loves fishing, they, they swap And, and also coming to that, You've got uh, two sorts of comps. You've got your senior uh, boys and Willers also. You've got juniors. Senior and juniors. You know, it's not just, you know, just, you yeah. know, one prize. There's two actual one prize. prizes. I think you've got $180,000 worth of prizes. Oh, it's $130,000. $130,000. Sorry, I gave another 50 grand for nothing. <laughs> yeah, but you've got the juniors and also you've got your adults. And they're yes. totally separate too. Exactly. And, that, and that's a good yeah, thing. That is good. Yeah. Yeah. Just with the wanes, we also have the Saturday wane too at the yeah. race course. At the race so course. So Friday right. nights are at the ramps, Saturday and, at the race course. And what course. time is the, the close off point at the race course? Start at 10, finish at 2 pm. If you're not in the queue by 2 pm, it doesn't get sorry. You can't weigh any fish. Yeah. So right. don't leave it to the last minute. Get no. there That's, and, and enjoy yeah. the atmosphere. Yeah. You know, there's every contestant gets a free lunch, yeah. a couple of free drinks. Ask you can buy it even if you're not a contestant. We've yeah. got facilities yeah. where you can buy drinks and food. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's a, you know, it's a great atmosphere. Oh, you can see all the fish coming been. in and the prize. Yeah. And everyone, everyone, sorry, sorry. No, 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 you talk. If, if you're if the everyone, guest. everyone gets there early enough, you've got the kids casting call. Uh, I was just about to say. Yeah, there's all types of things. You're having, you're having a bit of a sleep there, mate. <laughs> and it's not you. It's somebody else that can read my mind. Yeah. Hey? You're having a Captain Snooze. And we have the kids casting comp. We also have a lot of um, well, the different stalls with different um, people that um, that want to show their wares. So, you know, there's like a little bit of a, a carnival to walk around and look, look at everything people have got. And we hope um, to grow that, you know, make it yeah. more of a show. Stop it, we're laughing about and, something. And, and also a, a family day out type of thing as well. Exactly, yeah. over the years yes. we've had a lot of families come in that don't even fish. Kids casting comp. Fish to play. Yeah. Kids yeah. casting comp. And all the kids that enter, it's free to enter into the casting comp. Mm -hmm. It's 20 fishing rods to give away. Isn't Paul Worsley yeah. doing something with that? Paul's, every every junior oh, entrant will get a free current eye fish. DVD sign. Mate, oh, I don't right. care who the fishing organisation is. I don't care if it's Worsley or I don't care if it's That's yeah. Fishing. I don't care if it's Charlie Misk. You know, like I don't care if people are doing things for other people, like like Mainstay. We'll talk exactly. a little bit more about that later on. But if someone's doing something for you know, for kids, like I said, you know, like our, our main thing is to work with mental illness. 
man's in distress, you know, man's about it. And they're like, and you were just talking about it. Why the, why, basically why your club started was a bunch of blokes you know, going through the hard time that was in, the, you know, in that time where the depressions and things like that, and what kept people going was fishing. Mm -hmm. but things grow from that. So, you know, if, if, I, if I mention blokes like you know, Paul Worsley or I fish and things like that, mate, take my hat off to the blokes. Oh, fantastic. Mate, take yeah, the hat off to any person. I agree. You like so, so who are some of these? Let, let's give them a bit of a push. I see you've got JV Marine. Yeah, JV Marine. Jarvis Walker. Yep. Uh, um, Club Marine. I don't know. Gotta read the t shirt. We threw out the list there. Oh, yeah. We'll stop right there. It's gonna be here. Just hold it up. Get a photo of that one. There you go. There you go. People want to be there. We're here all night. We'll be here all night. But if people want to join the club, we meet down at the Mornington Yacht Club. Yep. Last Wednesday in every month. Come on down just as a visitor. We welcome you along. Yeah. Come through a meeting. Exactly. If you join as a family, all the children who join get a free rod and reel when they join. Oh really? So if, if you've got one or two kids, that covers your membership. I wish I was a kid. And, and why, why, why are you on that? What would be the actual membership fee to join you guys? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's a family. Family. Annual family. Annual family. Do you know what I like? Don't hold me to that. Sorry if I put you on there. I don't have a question. Do you want me to tell you? It's a hundred dollars for a family, right? I think it's Eighty or ninety dollars, eighty or ninety dollars for an individual, and forty dollars for a um, concession office. There we go. Thanks. Read our minds. Oh, oh, that's even better. <laughs> Mate, that's the only research I've done for this club. Because <laughs> I was thinking, I might join this club, <laughs> and I looked at the price and said, yeah, it's not a bad prices actually. Well, that gives you, we, you get more we than your money's value out of the club. Yeah. But it, it's you not don't. just. It's look. Although we've got a competition coming up, and like I keep pushing. I was actually talking to this. I know that we're talking away from the competition, but I, I was talking to a bloke down in the pier today. I was like, Frankston's my selfish me type. Yeah. Right, I go down there. I know that you, know, certain, you can only catch a fish there when it's blowing its guts out there. Wait a minute. Get to Frankston or is it Mornington? Frank's. No, no, Frank's is myself. Morning Tells you Mornington. No, he's actually no, Frank's. No. Oh, no, okay. Mornington's, Mornington's where we go down and we talk. We actually talk crap talk. Oh, <laughs> that's me. That's me. So, that's so we all get together down in Mornington. It's, it's easy. All the old blokes. Oh, yeah. You know, like uh, all of us. Yeah, we all know each other. So we get down there and fish like we did yesterday. But um, but more, Frank's. Oh, yes. like yeah, I know. I didn't care about catching. I just threw it because you'll see why in a minute. While I was down in Mornington. Uh, but. What, you know, like I was down at Frank's and Pier today, right, and we're talking about families, family people, clubs and things like that. You know, like I said, Tea Tree we're actually talking about. I was down at Frank's and Pier today and there was a uh, bloke there and I was sitting there, just threw my rod in and he just walked up to me, started talking to me. I must have this tag, if you've got problems, come and talk to me. And, uh, and uh, anyway, he just started talk, quickly talking to me. You know, like, and, uh, he what, likes fishing, doesn't know how to fish. Righto, he's going through a really hard time, broke his back at work and oh. righto, and he's yeah, you know, like we spent half an hour just mm. talking about his problems. Yeah. And I said, Righto, well I'm here all the time, come down and fish with me. And he said, I'd love to. Yeah. And that's what fishing's yeah. about. Yeah, like, and that's club. what clubs are about. Yeah. Right? Competitions. You know, like I know we're all gonna go out there on the weekend and you know, like and go down there and go to next weekend we're gonna try to catch this big fush. Fush, fush. Fush. Just like yeah, there he fush. is. Now we're going to get some chops. Yeah. Go with it. But that's one good thing about you know, joining a club, meeting new people, getting new, get new ideas. Social. It's social. You know, it just gets the confidence out of people. Like I said before, you learn so much about it. It's not just snapper fishing. No. The types of fish. Exactly. Fresh water, exactly. whiting to snapper. Yeah, Ocean, ocean. That's right. Squid. This is so much. We have excursions. We have comps. We have trips that we do. Yeah. We have various days really during the year. Day. We have adult competitions hey. during the year. I'll tell you what I'll do one day, right? Huh? And this is Guru Glen. That's the thing about fishing. Now, what we'll do one day, we'll, if if you could not want to, or yeah, like I'm, I'm sticking my neck out here because. You want it, would you? <laughs> Which neck? We'd have to really think of it. Just like to choose on. No, you're lucky. I know, I know. I wish you'd get a two. No. <laughs> anyway, no, no. Actually, because with all the things that you've been saying about your club and that, I think, you know, I can. I have to talk to my producer and my assistant producer and and um, Nelly and Kermy, but I've made up my mind already that we're going to do it. 
we're actually going to come down and do a live one from your your place, won't they? Not not on Wednesdays. Out. This is our Wednesday here. Yeah. But one night we'll sit down and arrange it. In, you know, like maybe even after this the competition. You know, and That's right. Down and do a, yeah, a live thing. Introduce your club to out the people, yeah. right, through the net. And you know, like, and like I said, you know, we're, there's a lot of fishing pages out there, like a launching way. You know, there's um, football, football, ah, popular bay fishing. And one of my mates actually runs Mornington Land Base Fishing, Jamesy, right, yeah. which is probably mm -hmm. another name, you know, James or not? Yeah, he actually worked for me for years. Oh, really? I feel yeah. sorry for you. <laughs> Fish? No. <Nah. laughs> James and I are good mates. We, we go fishing all the time. Before we go any further today, apparently who's that leading in your comp? In your club, I mean, oh, something's uh, already just started, started again. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've heard some, uh, some yeah. sort of agree certain, on their trophies. Yeah, certain people in the club. Yeah, yeah. Get hungry. If, you, if you don't mind me, we, we call them trophy hunters. Yeah, yeah. And what, what's his name? Uh, Greg. Ah, oh, well. Oh, is it? Is he? Is he the chairman of the teacher? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> something's going on there. The Backhand is just something's going on. Extra kilo on that fish. Mate, listen. Be honest, I can sit here and talk to you all night because you know, like we're, we're all got the same heart. We love fishing. Yeah. We love being involved with families. We love you know taking fishing out to the community and things like that. I'd love to sit here, like I said, talk to you all night. But we've got to get on with the show, don't we? Come but on. before you go any further, what? the lines are going to be open, guys. The phone number, if you want to call in, it's nine seven zero eight two eight four six. Call in and ask some questions. Three. These guys will try to answer it for you. Try. Try, yeah. try. So can I just say we've got late entries. Oh, late entries, yes. yes. It's closed. You can no longer That's enter right. online or that. post in entries. Please don't do that. You can only enter with late entries this weekend on Saturday between 9 and 5 p.m., 9 a.m., 5 p.m., at Tackle World Cranbourne, Tackle World Mornington, JV Marine in Keysborough, yep. and Gone Fishing. Just round the corner. Yeah, right. yeah, because I hear JV Marine, I stand to be correct, has actually got a big show on down there this weekend. Right, okay. Yeah, Carl, I think yeah. so. I'll, I'll check with. We'll uh, get on down and join yeah, up. I'll check cash with only, please. Yeah, we don't have yeah. any facilities for I think, cup. Yeah, like, there, well, there's a free plug. JV, I want some sponsorship now. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> there's a free plug. And exactly. I <laughs> anyway, but look, it's been fantastic having you in here. Well, oh, we've got, call, we've got a call coming through. Yeah, just hold on. Probably one of your mates. <laughs> you weren't supposed Hello? to pick it up. No, I know. I'm doing, doing I'm doing a Nui. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh my you God, I'm doing a Nui. You were uh, supposed to press the button, the line, call back. right? Oh. <laughs> See? I mean, you should be doing it then. You should. Nui, I think you better sit here next. <laughs> there we go. Right. It's come back. Sorry about that. Right. You press this one. Yep. Technology. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, this is Spiro from uh, Broadmeadow. Yeah, Spiro. I just wondered, can you weigh in? Can you ask the boys from the Dietrich Club if you can weigh in frozen fish? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's a question. There's, there's, there's a couple there's of boys in your fridge. They sound like a club member, I think. <laughs> I think but, so. Yeah, I'm sure they know there's the answer all, to that. There's, there's, always, there's, there's, always, there's always. Definitely <laughs> not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can you weigh it well, off? Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> There's always got to be one in the cloud. Yeah, that's it. Read, that's read the fine print. No new yeah. bladed fish. <laughs> anyway, yeah. anyway. Well, what we're going to do, we'll light the bell, Marie. Whilst before I wee myself from laughter, we're going to go to um, a commercial break. What do you reckon? I and so. uh, mate, like I said, it's been great having you in here. Thanks for having me. It's been fantastic. Yeah, it was great. And, uh, and get in the comp. Yeah. Right, okay. Yes. Our next, is, next guest is going to be Moose. And that's uh, Moose just being Moose from Regal Marine. From Regal Marine. Right, okay. So, um, Excellent. <laughs> it You're should be trouble. fun. This should be fun. <laughs> right, uh, mate, it's been a pleasure having you Thank on. You. Thank you. Like I said, it, yeah. I'd yeah. love to do one up to your place. And we'll get together we'll and talk yeah, about well, it. Yeah, we'll have a bit more fun. Have a bit more fun, yeah. We'll yeah, go a little bit longer. And we just talk all about Snapper. Before we quickly just zip across to the commercial uh, oh, break, just one guys, more. if you want to ring in, questions asked, the phone number is 9708 2846. And we're still we're waiting for your call. Hopefully, I'll get it right this time. And we've still got a couple of prizes to give away, but I'll work out who's going to be the frozen fish. I'll give you a free lucky. Yeah. <laughs> well. You might be able to get some frozen chaps with it as well. Okay. Right. Let's go. Okay, commercial break. Right, right. Live from Belmarine, Guru Glen. See ya. Bye.
award-winning screenplays and really attractive people comes a show with none of that coming soon You too can come out fishing on a boat, either a polycraft or a tinny. We'll get you on the water and we'll get you on the fish. This little beauty was actually caught out on wanting to hire boats, so thank you, Paul. I keep fishing affordable, so don't get stuck on a pier. Come down to Mornington and I'll get you out fishing from here. <laughs> you miss one, eh? <laughs> you want to sit on my lap and I wanted me to be a ventriloquist, but I... I <laughs> <laughs> We're trying. I couldn't tell you where I was... <laughs> we put my head. <laughs> I had to do the hurdles. <laughs> so I stuck him on a box behind us. <laughs> yeah, that was so close, that one. I'll tell you what. Anyway, this is Guru Glenn with that thing about fishing. Guru Glenn and friends. I've met a couple of new friends here tonight, here too. Oh, I've met them a few times. Dave is basically the first time I've met you. Actually, hold on, hold on. <coughs> is that a moose call? <laughs> uh, I see, I'm chocolate moose. I'm a, I'm a dessert, not an animal. Oh, okay. Oh, have we got any moose anywhere, fellas? <laughs> so it's not fern or anything like that. No. <laughs> okay. But I'm delicious. <laughs> and delightful. <laughs> delicious and delightful. So, so sweet. So anyway. sweet. Anyway, anyway, anyway we'll, keep, we'll keep going back to yeah, you. Please. Right? Can, okay, let's, do, let's start a game from the beginning. Anyway, this is Guru Glenn with That's the Thing About Fishing, live from Balmoraine. And uh, I've got a couple of more guests here tonight. <laughs> I've got more guests than I've got friends. <laughs> so, we've got Moose and Dave from Bel uh, Regal Marine. Yeah, I know he's Bel Marine. Right, right. I know he's Bel I'm sorry, mate. Anyway. I hear that you've got a new program going. Yeah, look, that's right. Um, working very hard on this TV show. Just like yourselves, we um, were very much into the boating fishing world and we saw, uh, I suppose, an opening for a TV show that's more boating based. Uh, it's called Decked Out. This show is a bit of a cross between Pit My Ride uh, Orange County Chopper, all those Pit, sort of Pit shows. Pit my ride. Pit my ride. So I'm going to bring my boat or my car, which one? If I had a dollar for everyone volunteering. <laughs> the idea with our show is we wanted to show people uh, what you could do to your boats, how you could modify them, how you can restore them, some of the correct procedures you should do when attempting to do some of these things, and have a real laugh along the way. It's by no means a top end of the market show and it's by no means a bottom end, it's kind of a nice collage of things that you can do to your boat. Oh, oh yeah, it's one of those, is it? Oh, we collage. like to, we got to cater for everybody, you know? <laughs> and and, and uh, so, um, well, I suppose what we're trying to do is show people that, look, you can get out there, you can have a lot of fun in the water, it doesn't need to cost you a bucket load of money. Boating is by no means the cheapest hobby out there. There are certainly cheap you hobbies. Sure, you sure about that? I think it's a headache at times. It's not a leisure industry for some people. But we <laughs> like to show people that, look, you'll only live once, as far as we know. Oh, yeah, true. You know? And whilst but, we have... But to live twice, I heard. Oh, we get like cats, we get nine. So they're not a cat, though. <laughs> so look, enjoy your life. And, and we're just here to help you. Well, now it's a meditation show. Now enjoy your life. <laughs> um, enjoy your life, and we're here. <laughs> and we're here to show you a way that we can um, to help you facilitate that. I suppose. I mean, look, I suppose that's what we're all trying to do here. We're all just trying to help people 
enjoy life. I mean, that's what I think. If you're not enjoying yourself, what? You much more like as like yeah. you said, play darts. Play darts. Exactly. Well, play darts. I think what you haven't said is that you're starting out with a boat that you would go buy a wreck. Yeah. And then put your imagination into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a full restoration type of thing, and yeah, look, it's, but it's not. We're not trying to make a boat to enter in a concourse competition or something. We're entering a, a sort of a, a a regular man sort of work. You know, yeah. we don't want to restore it to a pristine condition because who's going to actually go out and do that? There'd be no point us doing that on telly. So you're right, Dave. You're right. We're trying to uh, get a boat that you and I can go out and buy for a few bucks, something you might see at a yard or on the newspaper or in the on websites and whatnot, yeah. pick it up for a few bucks, have a look at it, let your imagination run wild, and then and see what you come out with. And you know, I think we all do that with our own boats. And we, we've looked at them, and gone, oh, you know, I really would love to see this. Or you might be down by the water one day and you see a really grouse boat. You think, oh, I love that. It looks grouse. And um, always wondered how it's done. And and, and and certainly that's what we're um, we're trying to show you. It's sort of. Being in the marine game ourselves, we've got the unique position of being behind the scenes a little bit. We see a lot of guys come into the shop who are constantly upgrading their boats. Yeah, the yeah. pie warmers, the yeah. television, <laughs> all the, the little oh, bits the of little, yeah, the, 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 the luxury, luxury items. Yeah. But see, I, I'm hoping, or I can, I'm, I hope I'm not going to... But you're a land base. I don't know how that's going to work with the pie there, warmers. For, for once, can you let someone else talk? <laughs> right on. And it, there's a coffee, by the way. There's a coffee there. All right. um, no, no. Although we're talking about, you know, pick my rides and pick for this and you know, like oh, the phones on the game. We, we've got an income. Right. Uh, uh, we'll probably get Nui or yourself or no. Yeah, that's right. Oh, you took out the speaker. Hello? You took away the speaker. Oh took no, put the speaker back on. Hello. Hello? You see? Oh wow, well, another one. No, no. <laughs> Thought it might have been I forgot, I forgot to wear my dress today. You might have hang up, please. Yeah, I've got... <laughs> <laughs> that fixed it up, didn't it? Here we oh, go, they come back again. Oh, they come back. They put the speaker on. That's it. And Hello. Yeah, good day, mate. This is Knackers from Cranbrook. <laughs> yeah, well, well Knackers from Cranbrook. Good day, Knackers. Yeah, go on. Can you hear me, Moose? Yeah, 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 I can hear you, mate. Yeah, yeah listen, mate, I've got a spacer, a little 4.5 aluminium spacer, and yeah. I was thinking about pimping it up. Go for it, mate. And I bought a tuna chow off eBay. Really cheap. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Tuna chow. Yeah. In the rough weather, she tends to tilt a little bit to the left and the right. Just wondering if you've got any, you know, ideas what I can do to stabilise the thing. Well, who says you have to stabilise it? Don't let people tell you what you can and can't do. <laughs> I say if it's swaying, go with the flow. Make a bit of a dance out of it. You might get other boats involved in it. Well, might be good. Yeah, you're doing good there. Yeah. And I'll tell you the best bit. It won't cost you a cent. Well, I was thinking about maybe some outriggers. Outriggers would work. No, actually, tell them to put some sails on. Yeah, listen, there's no need for this to remain a tinny. So this could be a show. This could be a show. We could be converting your tinny into a, a sail yacht. Yeah. We have nothing against yachties on this show. No, not at all. Not. Get rid of the tunage tower. I wouldn't say get rid of it. I'd say more convert it into a mast. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Done. With a television and a pie warmer. Oh, you got to have the TV and the pie warmer. And don't forget the barbecue on the back. Oh, yeah. That's right. You've got to have that a barbecue that. on the back. I've got to hand it to you blokes of Regal Marine, mate. You blokes are unbelievable. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nagus. No, no, right. right, mate. Thanks, Nagus. Yeah, I don't think you'll win the prize, bud. Bye. <laughs> 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 but yeah, look, I mean, uh, that's, that's What's going favorite. on tonight? <laughs> <laughs> it's all the hot weather. No, it must be. I, I think it is the weather. I think, you know what it is? It's the shirts. I know. What do you reckon, yeah, Nui? The shirts? Ah! Shirts. Talk about shirts. Yes, shirts. Talk about shirts. <laughs> yes. Like I said, I only come in a singlet. And I had to, lucky I had because you don't want to see all my tattoos, because then I look like a lout. <laughs> and I was waiting. <laughs> Moose. Moose. Let's, let's say, yeah. accidents Moose. have been known to happen. Okay, accident. I was 58 years ago. It was an accident. <laughs> oh, you know what that's called? It's called old age. I'm sure there's an Allianz insurance ad in this. Is it? Someone Is it? sitting there waiting for their t shirt. Allianz insurance? Yes, my t shirt hasn't arrived. Yeah, but we'll wait for a pit my shirt. Oh, those ones. Anyway, really listen. Maybe if you didn't work seven days a week, he'd remember yeah, things. No. <laughs> anyway, listen, listen. This is all great about pimp and boats and that. No, it's right. fantastic. I've seen some. Some funny things, and I was doing a radio show, 
and you know, and uh, and you know, like I saw, saw a couple of things. But I'm, I'm not a boating, you're right. I'm more of a land base. I'm just starting to get into going out in boats and doing some fishing, but I'm more of a land based boy. But I've seen some stupid things happening in boats, right? It wasn't it last year that we heard it was an old bloke pulls out a black rock or something and in 35 to 40 knot winds in a in a 14 foot tinny and the police and everything had to go. Mate, I hope these boats you're making are going to be safe. Yeah, look, I mean... Because that's what... I, 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 safety is a must. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, right. Exactly. Right. exactly. <laughs> on Mates Day, we went out and we'll come back in that... Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that later. We saw that little tinny out Oh, there. it's a little tinny out of Mates Day. I fell over backwards, yeah, like and it was blowing. Yeah, look, yeah, I, I, I agree that most of the time, half the regulation that we've got is because we're getting enforced on stuff because some fool did something in 30 knot winds, mm -hmm. and half the time I see a problem and you see it on the news, there's an open case of beer in the bottom of the boat. There's no life jackets, yeah, right. no yeah. lights on the boat. And we all cop these extreme regulations because of some fool doing something. And you've got boaters that's doing the right thing and they're getting pinned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. you get right. idiots yeah. out there yeah, yeah. that are doing stupid things. My father things. used to say you can't legislate for the stupid. No, no, no absolutely. <laughs> no, I 100% agree with that. But to me, you know, like safety on the water is, is, is an absolute. Absolutely. Like there's a shame, well, not so long ago, I, I'm standing to be corrected. Right, um, there was a... Now, even in a kayak, there was a bloke up at um, Mount Martha. Right, I went out in a kayak, windy day, no life jackets. Well, anyway, we'll talk about that one. We're not going to talk about life jackets tonight. With you. No, no, it's okay. I'm sorry about that, Moose. No, 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 that's no, no I'm really sorry about that, Moose. I know, you want want to, I know you want to talk about life jackets. We had a whole spiel, but anyway. Yeah, he, bought a, he bought a life jacket instead of my bloody shirt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, but yeah, like, it's great. Look, when, so when's your show going to start airing? It's not airing until the start of January. It obviously takes quite a few months to build these boats and uh, post-production obviously takes a little while with editing and such. Oh, so really? it, just like anything in the real world, you, you obviously you want to put your time and effort into it and we want to make sure the information that we get out to the people is uh, as correct as we can get. There's obviously going to be a bit of leeway because what we do is might be completely different to what you want to do, but obviously we want to make sure the information we give out is as correct as we can get and as safe as we can get. I'm glad you mentioned safety. It is the number one thing in the water and everything is a step down from that. If you can't be safe in the water, there's no point being out there. No. It's not the hardest thing in the world. It might give you the irrits, but look, just do it. You know, If you look a fool for a few seconds, who cares? You're safe. Exactly. Safety is paramount to everyone. Yeah, no, I hundred percent agree with that. We had a guy come into the shop and he was arguing about life jacket rigs and uh, we got him to pull the cord, we would repack it, put the bottle on, and it went down within three minutes. Yeah. And it was yeah. the only life jacket on board. Yeah. No. Well, so, well, yeah. well could, yeah. we, but we'll, we've we'll, got another special guest <laughs> we'll talk about all that kind of stuff very soon. Alright, so stay tuned. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, before we go go further away. If he's ever down at Regal Marine in Vermont, come and see these guys. They'll look after with bait, all sorts of gear, even a boat, and so forth. So, and also, if you want to call in, fellas, the phone number is 9708 2846. Please give us a call, uh, ask any questions, and they'll take it uh, on board. Thanks very no, much. No, I haven't finished yet. Oh, you haven't finished? <laughs> Who wants this show, me or you? We both. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, listen, you might be lucky one day if Moose is actually making an ad and he jumps into a pool of water and pulls out his life vest and goes, <laughs> Yes, that was, that was not the warmest of days. No, I was going to say, yeah. it was middle of June. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. At, 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 least, at least one degree, maybe less. We I know. know. We're hoping the Christmas one's going to top that. Was he going to dress up as Santa Claus? Well, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a surprise. It's cloak and daggers, cloak and very no, cloak and daggers, isn't it? And who's no. going to be the elf? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, just don't, long, long as I don't have to sleep in a little skirt with lace stockings. Oh, um, well, it's a top secret. Anyway, Moose. Thanks, mate. mate really, 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 no, it's been great. Cheers, Glenn. Thanks very much, Dave. Moose. Thanks, mate. This is Guru Glenn, and that's the thing about fishing. And it got exciting, eh? Live from Belmarine. And we really do appreciate Belmarine for allowing us to use their premises. Um, next week, we're actually uh, got a big surprise because we've actually got Belmarine. Someone from Belmarine coming in is one of our guests. Oh, hey. Righto. So hey. he's going to talk about his crummy things. So, <laughs> and, and winches, huh? And winches, and winches. Actually, that's that's one of them down there. Oh, down there. Right, so um, 
we're going to talk about witches and things like that. So, we thank, but once again, I've got to say thanks to Belmarine for allowing us to use their premises. We're just, you know, we're new at all this stuff and we're actually learning, right? And it's great, great to actually have a nice place like this, or otherwise we would have had to do it in some car park. We would have had to do it in my spare bedroom and tell you about this big. Oh, well, <laughs> what, when you go down that road. It would have been crazy. <laughs> no, exactly. Be fun. And I don't think I want to share a bedroom with a car. No. <laughs> no. Anyway, this is Guru Glenn. We're going to go to an ad, one of our sponsors, and uh, we'll be back after the short break with some more fun. All the best, guys. In a world full of quality TV, award-winning screenplays, and really attractive people, comes a show with... None of that. Coming soon. I caught it on Seaford Bait. affordable so don't get stuck on a pier come down to Mornington and I'll get you out fishing from here <laughs> welcome back to that's the thing about fishing with Guru Glenn and friends I know oh, just a little recap on the weekend we had a bit of fun didn't we oh it was absolutely fantastic and i know that this has been pushed out i know that charlie and that spoke about a lot yesterday last night on their show and they you know showed some good good film footage and clips that was actually great but Carl and myself were honored to be involved with mates day last week on sunday yep yeah, and we we'll volunteered to take it volunteered to take it up and i was the decky but um, well, well well where do i begin with the decky <laughs> yeah, hey no no that's flat right. battery on the car? Oh yeah, yeah flat battery. Yeah, flat battery, because some person left the light on. Yeah. Oh. It hey? I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers. Someone parked the car away and uh, forget to turn the light off. Well, well, I'm sorry. I said, yeah, you still have... Oh, I, you know, it was like just a few minutes ago. They went off, put my hand out and say goodbye to Dave. And like I said, I'm glad we're getting a psychologist in because... I like guess I I'll need one. No, excuse me. No, I reckon it's me. It's me. <laughs> Because I told you last week I suffer from rejection and insecurity. Everyone does hate me. Nui, can you give him a hug, please? Oh, he right. needs one. Oh, give him a hug. Oh. Give him a hug. Oh. Give him a hug. Oh. Oh. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to say something. I'm, I'm, I can't. I want to hear. Anyway. Yeah, suffering, all right. Suffering. <laughs> from, I won't say what, but suffering. Anyway, anyway, we had a great day out there. The weather got really bad, right? Carl and I went out about half past four, wasn't it? Yeah, we went out half past four. Because we're going to try to get a couple of fish, but he still can't get me onto a fish. No wonder I love my land base. Fifteenth snapper I've caught land base this year, and I've caught two on the boat, none with him. Right, I, you yeah, I, think, I think he's jinxing my boat. No, no, you told me that you were good. You get me on the fish. I oh, was, well, but uh, the, the fish are not biting. That's the only thing. They're oh, sounding up. Mate, they're not well, biting. Look at all these fishing reports and all these photos. 
And I look at launching way, all these big fish they bring in like this. Yeah, we're the unlucky ones. I can't, I can't even get one of... Not even a toad? No, I can't even get one of the producer's earrings. You know, those little pickies that he catch. He can catch more snapper than you. Well, anyway, I might have to have a talk to him. They're about that big, but... Yeah. But anyway... <laughs> no, so we'll we get there. Out. It'll, come, it'll come very soon. Anyway, we got out about 4.30. Got nothing. It was really rough. Like I don't suffer from seasickness. I wasn't too rough in the morning. No, but they come in and got it pitted right out. It was actually quite nice. So then we went out at and eight o'clock. Who did we have on board? We had the twins. Twin, that's it. Yep. And uh, then look, well, I've done. Yeah, like as I said, yeah, you know, we work with mental illness and things like that, and people that need help and you know, you know things like that. These couple of boys, yeah, you know, like I've done a bit of fishing with them. We're at the Lang Lang trying to get some gummies. Took him out in the higher boat with one of our episodes, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right, mate. Yeah, Steve yeah, and Mark. Mark and, uh, yeah, Steve Steve and Mark. Mark. Lovely no, boys, very, very lovely nice boys. Yeah. Twins, you know, good kids. Funny boys. And They're the funny. best thing about it, though, What's that? just seeing them just makes it really so happy for, for us, like myself know, as a boat owner yeah. and yourself. Just yeah. seeing them, you know, doesn't matter even we caught a fish or didn't catch a fish, it was just fantastic seeing them being happy. Mate, yeah. and you know, just watching all those... Um, producer just showed me something, you know something, he should know by now I cannot read without my glasses. Yeah, I know I know what he said, but I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyway. No, the other oh. side. <laughs> that one there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, he wants me to talk about Yip Yip Talk. Yeah, that's, that's going to be coming up. I oh, know. That's going to be coming up now, actually. Actually, we're going to be going down at Mate's Day with Yip Yip Fish O Tour! If that coot car was any smaller. Sorry, mate, but we're going there now. Good, see ya. Bye. G'day, guys. This is uh, Carl. That's, about, that's the thing about fishing. And this is Yip Yip Talk. Moose. G'day, mate. Hey, we don't have How friends. How are you there, mate? I like your microphone. Very colourful, very sexy. Oh, it's absolutely stunning, isn't it? What do you think of the uh, the outcome of today there, bud? I'll tell you what, it's fantastic. I couldn't have expected a better turnout. The weather's been a bit funky, and uh, it just goes to show that people will always go fishing regardless of the weather. Yeah. It's, um, it's just about getting out and having fun. So to see all these people, I'm chuffed. I think it's fantastic. Oh, exactly. I mean, considering the uh, the weather out there, it's you know, just a bit blowy, but not many boaters like myself didn't catch anything. But, but that's fishing. Yeah, it is. Look, you know, if we caught fish every time, we'd probably get really bored of it. Take up darts or something. Darts? You know? Well, it's a simple you, you, teach. You want to show me how that's done? Darts? Exactly. Well, you just aim for this section, right? Right here in the middle. That's the best. You can also go around, never go to the sides. Do we, do, we, uh, do we draw circles? You can draw just one circle, oh, but one. it's a big one though, it's right here. Okay, we can fix that up very easily. But it just goes to show that people will always be resilient to the weather, always go fishing. Look, if you don't catch anything, I think it just adds to the fun when you do. No worries there, Moose. All right there, mate, we're going to keep going. I'll and nice, you, nice talking to you there, buddy. <laughs> nice talking to you too, thanks. All right, guys. this is uh, Carl on Yip Yip Fish Show Tour. Okay, here we are. We've just come across David here, mate. Yeah, you've got Carl here from uh, That's the Thing About Fishing. Yep, yep, fish o talk. So, uh, it was just a fantastic uh, scenario here we've got here. Fantastic on Mates Day. Uh, have you got anything to say to that there, buddy? I love your microphone for starters, I've got to say that, number one. But what a magnificent day. I think it's the 16th or 17th Mates Day for Fish and Fish Foundation. E exactly. A brilliant turnout. We were very, very lucky with the weather this morning at uh, 8 o'clock when everyone yep. went out. Nice and calm, but unfortunately about 10 It just sort of picked up. But there's got to be at least 50 snapper brought in today. And that's oh, I was just about to say, how many actual least, snappers? At least got 50 for? snapper. Why? And uh, you can just see them sitting under the seats of everybody around so here. So I better go and uh, find that bag and take one home for myself. I tell you what, there's a few people trying to knock them off in there. So you better <laughs> join, I better go join the queue. Join exactly. the queue, mate. Join the queue. No worries. All right, nice talking to you Thanks, there, Carl. mate. We'll catch up with you later. Yeah, Con. How are you, mate? You've got uh, Carl here from Yip Yip Fish Show Talk, mate. How you going, mate? Oh, I heard you had a bit of a struggling time out there, buddy. No, we did all right. We've got a Port Jackson. The young kid was happy. Port Jackson? A Port Jackson. I'll tell you what, you did better than me. Yeah. What did you get, mate? Nothing. Donuts. Not a touch? Not a touch. Was it the deck hand that no, didn't the, help you? No, uh, the deck actually ruined it. Did he? Who was it? Oh, uh, well, I could turn around. And if I said it, he'll probably uh, throw the microphone. There he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah, Guru Glenn. Guru Glenn. How you going, Glenn? Not bad, mate. You know this bloke? Unfortunately, no, yeah, I, I wanted to call it crap talk, but he... he nah, went, yeah, hold yeah, on, yeah. hold on. My ex-wife's ringing. I better, I better answer uh, it. Ex -wife. Oh, it is. Oh, 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 o
Happy days. Awesome. So tell us about your day, mate. Was it cool? My day was totally cool. Okay. G'day, guys. This is uh, Carl. That's the thing about fishing. And we're on uh, Yip Yip Fisho Talk down at Mate's Day. And look what we got here. We got Paul Worsley. G'day, Connor. How are you, mate? It's a very interesting microphone. I feel like I should be a cephalopod. Yes, you should be. So, um, how'd you go out there today, the champ? Uh, we had a cracking day. Went to 11 metres of water, caught no fish. The wind got up, so after half an hour we pulled the in. We snuck up the river for the toughest day to bring fish oh, in. I reckon it's only tougher than that. It's a little bit hard, this seems like a sail, but we stuck in, we ended up catching the three cracking rib. And the deal was, I was going to let him take a rib home for dinner. Yes. But I don't like killing brim because brim, literally, you get a 40 centimetre brim, could be 25 years old. Oh, I know. My very good mate AB, I rang him. He said, Paul, I'll give you a snapper. So he gave us a yeah, snapper this morning. So you've done a trading? We did a trade. We traded for a small brim to a big snapper. Fantastic. So Adam gets to take a fish home. The best thing is, Adam actually rang his mum and said, Mum, fire up the bar, we're having fish for you. Are we all invited? Absolutely. I'm done. He's, Adam's bringing the bourbon, apparently. Is he? Oh, well, well, right with you. And um, who was your deckie today, if you don't mind me asking? Well, I had to, I had to get it was desperation stakes. Oh no! So it was very difficult. So Jet wasn't available. So yeah, I know. I was about to say that. That's so I, it. I took another old mate, and we had a good day. And it was I didn't actually know that Adam is a big motorsport fan. So okay. he was actually excited that we went out the boat with old Case, and yep. uh, it was a great day, mate. And that's what this day is all about. Exactly. It's just about making people happy. I'm going to be on stage, do a talk. Yes, you do. Uh, and when you see the smiles on the faces, that is what this day is all about. Carl, you're a legend, mate. I hope no, wait, all the best there, mate. Thank you very much. I won't give you a kiss. No, please go. Because people will start talking. Because I'm scared. Thank That's you. That's it. You're going to come right. back. Once again, you should be here during the ad breaks. How <laughs> free hip, hip, hip. Anyway, welcome back. This is Guru Glenn and friends. I've had a couple more friends here too, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's growing. It's, it's getting bigger and bigger each time. Well, uh, anyway, we've got Trevor from Launching Way here. How are you, Trevor? Sorry, mate. My brain's going around the twist. We're live at Belmarine, you know that, don't you? I know we're live at Belmarine. All right. Welcome it's, aboard, Trev. Mate, if you see, if you see, <laughs> anyway, while I've got Trevor in here, because once again today, right, I want this show to be all about educational, and things like that, things that you know, we need to know about boating and you know, other areas and things like that. And what I've done is, like, Trevor and I, we caught up what, about a week or so ago? Yeah, about a week ago. Yeah, I'm talking about a few things. We're sitting down there out the front of his shop and he was starting to talk to me a, bit, a little bit about life jackets and things like that, and things that people, probably the normal boating wouldn't even know about. No, they're very, very unaware of what's been going on lately. Uh -huh. And um, it came to my attention when people down at the boat ramp were actually being booked for uh, not having compliant life jackets. And it brought up a big sort of argument going on and I didn't think it was quite right. So I decided to do a lot of homework into it and find out you know, what was the, the requirements and the law about these life jackets. And it, it is so confusing. It actually it does your head in. And for a, a person like myself that's got the help of Marine Safety Victoria, the Water Police, and a lot of other people around, to actually uh, give 24 different answers and not one of them is the same and uh yeah just and people can be booked over it so i couldn't work out it's just that complicated that we have we have to sort it out yeah, it's one no. of those gray areas actually now tell me like as you were mentioned is this the actual right way about wearing a life jacket actually carl i think you've actually got that a bit right haven't you mate it's just oh, here we go we've got a problem <laughs> Excellent, oh. <laughs> excellent. Yeah, yeah, tell me. They're the biggest kahunas I've ever seen. Now yeah, tell me, yeah, tell me, which way am I going to float? Up or down? Yeah, doctor, Mate, you've got to go see a doctor on that one. They're I think so. I think so. <laughs> well, I'm going to have a problem sitting there. Mate, you've got a problem. It's like this is not pregnant. Because if you want your family jewels, 
then don't wear it. Wear it the uh, proper way. And you know, uh, Ricky Goose, you let us know what is the correct way. Goose. Oh, Moose, sorry. Goose. Moose Goose. Sorry, sorry mate, I'm really freezing. I apologise for that. Can you, can you tell the viewers? Squeezing his goose. I reckon he likes it, he's hanging on to it. Yes, we're going. Can you, you tell the viewers <laughs> out there which way is the actual correct way of wearing one of these? Yeah, I can see you've got one like, in your bag there. I do. You, mind you, obviously, no. mine's not good. <laughs> okay, well, Definitely not good. Th th that's a good segue to um, new non uh, crotch jackets. So, <laughs> and that was my life jacket. Was? Was. was. Well. Be, uh, this one there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Let's not get a new one out of it. So there's quite yeah. a few different brands. They're all generally going to be the same sort of jacket. Uh, they're 150 n version flotation which is good for about 40 kilos and up. It's quite important to mention that, I think, because a lot of people always come and say, hey, Moose, can I get some for my kids? Well, how old are your kids? If they say they're like sort of six, well, you know, forget it. It ain't happens. Kids and inflatables is a big no-no. Even though you can buy 100 end flotations, which are good for 20 kilos to 40 kilos, no. Your kids, you want to be safe regardless. If they fall in the water, you want them to float correctly in the first time. So, uh, Trevor will show you uh, some other jackets yeah. later, which are a bit more appropriate. But this is a brand new uh, 150 n adult inflatable. So, you can see they come in a packaging. No big deal like there. The itself. Yeah, look, sizing sizing is very much dependent on your body shape. And you know, I'm not that big. I'm a, I'm a pretty slim guy, so... <laughs> Easy, pretty <laughs> slim guy. They ask me people have feelings. <laughs> Big hearts. That's a lot to feel. Now this is what you just call a standard yoke jacket. There is many different types of jackets in the market with different strapping. Some have metal buckles, some plastic. Some are harness ready, so if you're on yachts, for example. Um, some are a bit more comfortable with neoprene or, or um, uh, tracksuit material. What's that called again? Felt. Felt, Felt lining. This is just a neoprene collar. You can get some without any. So I'll stand up. Hopefully I'm in frame. Um, the, well, uh, mate. Well, we don't know. Actually, Moose. Uh, down a bit. Okay. We, we've got a bit of a problem. What's that? I'm looking at the size differential. Compare that to now, you. Size, well. um, size does matter. You're right. But thankfully, these jackets are relatively one right. size fits most. One size so, fits all? No, I won't say all because I've met some blokes who. Yeah, sit down, Because I've met some people that are too big. No offence, but you know, the, every size is different, so whatever. So obviously it's just an adjustment strap, just like any other, I suppose, pair of pants or t-shirt that you can adjust. Actually, yeah, Guru needs a belt. Can you be able to give him one of them? Now, it's, it, it is a very simple thing. But that doesn't stop people wearing them incorrectly. <laughs> like it myself. Is, it is just a singlet. So one side in, over the back, through the other loop, over your shoulders, click it up, pull it relatively firm. You don't want it too firm because when this thing inflates, and I've done it a few times. <laughs> yeah. Like myself just then. It will pull very tight. And if it's too tight, it will pull against your chest and it will make breathing a little bit difficult. Uh, and when you're in the water, you've just had an accident, you don't want to have to be worrying about your breathing. Inside these jackets, you do have a manual inflator, so once it is inflated, if it does start to feel squishy, you can add air. Uh, you also got your little whistle for attracting attention and a couple reflectors. So these jackets come in many colors, they come in camouflage, all that is irrelevant, it's all nice and stylish. Inside, as you've seen, they're all yellow, which is your PFD1 compliance. Um, there are many pros and cons to life jackets. There really isn't the right jacket. There's just different jackets. These ones, obviously, people prefer a lot these days because they're slim and comfortable. Uh, in the past, a lot of people were neglecting to wear jackets because of the bulk. Um, okay, people are entitled to that opinion. That's why these jackets came around. Now, initially, they were very expensive. Now, you know, 60 bucks, 70 bucks, they do get, obviously, more professional comfortable models for a lot more, but you can get a couple of these for a few bucks. Um, I'll let Trev talk about some of the other safety <coughs> aspects of owning one of these jackets, because it isn't just straightforward and buying well, one. Uh, so I'll let Trev... Well, one of the reasons why we went to the Yokes in the first place was the boat's under 4.8 metres thought out. 
I remember starting back at the ramp in, in 20 years ago where the average size of a boat was 14 feet. You know, your, your car spaces were, you know, 11 metres long. Now the car spaces are 14 metres long and they're still too short. We need to have car spaces to 20 metres long. The boats have improved. Look at the boat catches today we've got, you know, you just drive straight up, click on, drive straight off trailers, you know, multi-roller systems. Everything is advanced. Our boats have advanced, our safety gear is advanced. Um, <coughs> to have a, a boat like that, you drive straight up the trailer and you, you're booked because you're not wearing a life jacket because your mates just jumped out and let you off the ramp is a bit farcical when you've got, you know, probably 40 to 50 other people around you. But it has happened. It has happened. Yeah. And that, is, that to me, is sort of wrong. Um, but having, having said that, uh, at the moment, the police are doing a blitz down, especially at, down at Launching Way, down at Caram, at the Patterson River Great Ramp. They're checking all the yokes and all that. And I've come across a number of problems, uh, especially, with, especially with the yokes. Um, for argument's sake, the one that Carlsy let off a minute ago, mind you, it did sort of work, but if you have a look at the rust on the back of it, you can see it hasn't been serviced. You can see when you go to unscrew it that uh, it's got corrosion all around it. Uh, obviously, the jacket hasn't been serviced, so you will get done. And, and how often do you have to really service these jackets? You hit the nail on the head. Here we go. We're into it. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. It is yeah. whatever it is to manufacturers That's according to like the manufacturer's yours. instructions, isn't it? That's right. So this is an essential jacket made by a company called Essential, obviously. So it's whatever Essential designates is a service time. And if we look in the back here, Essential designate once every 12 months, once a year. There is a little bit of an arms race in some manufacturers saying our jackets are good for two, three, four years. I would say the rule of thumb, if one jacket company says check every 12 months and some say check every two years it's best just to check every 12 months it takes 15 minutes out of your day one day a year well, well the, the problem the, the the two year servicing on the jackets as i found out is if they actually unscrew your canister after a year and it's got rust and corrosion around it they'll deem that to be the two years out um, you have to get tested every every two years now we can take for argument's sake the storming yep now, this is a brand new Stormy, it was purchased only, only about a month ago, less than a month ago. I go onto the jacket here, and you can read the jacket. The date of manufacture is 2011. Can, can I just, just wait a second? <coughs> Viewers, hold on. Where, where, where are we pointing? Show me there, mate. Date of manufacture where your hand is, just right there. there. Okay, viewers. Yeah, just have a look, if you can. It's right there. Okay? It's right there. So, so technically, at the moment, I would be booked if I bought if I bought this from a shop, put it on thinking I'm doing the right thing, I now am booked because it's a 2011 jacket. However, if you see down the bottom, I haven't I haven't filled out the date of manufacture on a Stormy. So if you go down there where the date of manufacture, that's okay, going to be once in. again, sorry fellas. Right down here on the bottom, on your jackets there, guys. Right down on the bottom. So that now date of manufacture then precedes the, ma the manufacturer's date and you have 24 months for that jacket to be tested. So it's on the date of purchase. Now, nobody I've known have filled them in correctly. That's so the police officer then goes back and he says date of manufacture yeah, and you're right. stunned. Right. Yeah, yeah. Gray, very gray area. What we do down at the shop is uh, we'll, uh, when we sell one, uh, we give them a receipt and I believe this works well with the guys. We give them the receipt with the dates and everything, uh, who the shop is and all the rest. I give that uh, every receipt to the boat owner with their jacket. I tell them to laminate that, keep that for one year. We talked to the maritime services when we had them down the shop a month ago or so, and they said that was a fairly good way of showing. But they do want you to mark the jacket. I um, I've had I've had the pleasure of talking to Marine Safety Victoria, Water Police, and the grey area is, mm -hmm. and they leave yourself open. You can produce your data, your, your purchase on the jacket. If he's anywhere near half that he wants to go yet, he will say it's not filled in. He'll go by the date of manufacture. That's a brand new jacket. And now on that trip, now who does the actual service? Do they bring it into you guys, or do okay. the uh, tackle shops to service it, or can the actual grey area, you know, the boat owners, do their own sort of service and fill it out? Right. From what I've discovered over the last two weeks, two and a half weeks, is whatever that whatever is written by the manufacturer, 
is, is what you've got to do for the jacket. Now, for argument's sake, with the Stormy Seas jacket, it's every two years to be serviced and it can only be done by Stormy Seas. Having said that, you must check the canister and maintain that the canister is in good condition. With the jackets, they must be done every year, but they can be done by simply downloading a form, which I'm... Let me oh, yeah, with. I mean, it's... it's hold on. Let, can oh, I just bring that a bit closer? Let's start up. Carl, you showed this. It says on this about the self-service. Can you see it on there? Okay, can you see it here? Viewers, self-service. I'll bring it a bit closer. Is, is that all good? Okay, that's the self-service. And then here's the actual form, like what Trevor was talking about. Okay. Yeah, so with these particular brands, and they are different brands, but uh, to be quite anal, the igniter systems are one of generally two or three brands. So they might be made by Yamaha or whatever. They're generally going to be the same jacket. With these forms, it's a simple pass or fail for about 30 checkpoints. Little things like, does it manually inflate? Does the whistle work? Is there any tears, corrosion? The big one is the... Oh, we're getting a Oh, we have an incoming call. Oh, there you go. There you go. Press the black one. The speaker. The speaker, yep. And then... Hello. Line one. Uh, hello, can I speak to Trevor at Launching Way? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah Trevor's here. Trevor, listen, yeah. I need to know, mate, I've had an argument with Mullen, uh, with uh, Fisheries about this ice jacket thing, you know. I spent 13 grand on implants on my girlfriend, <laughs> and they reckon it doesn't count. I reckon there's more air in the implants that I pay for than the CFC. <laughs> Well, I reckon, I reckon, uh, so what's your name again? I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I reckon, what I reckon you should be doing is you should be bringing her on this show and we'll show you how to manually service hey. those his plans. <laughs> hey, hey, no, no. Now, must, must be Britt Eckerson's um, new boyfriend. Bye. <laughs> I think so. I mean... He must be related to Spear or Nackers. Yeah. <laughs> How can we get all these weirdos calling us in? They no must be idea. you, Carl. They're all your friends. Like the truth. Yeah, they're sorry. All, they're sorry. all got long names like yours. Alphabet. Alphabet names. Alphabet. This is the big See, ticket no. item. Oh, no, sorry, guys, keep it going. Keep yeah, it going. So the big ticket item in self-checking these jackets is the weights of the cylinder. Obviously, you can't physically see what gas is inside, so they go by weight. Now, each cylinder, and I'll just unscrew this one. This is a brand new one, viewers. Each cylinder is stamped. You got how much is weight? No, no, no. It's, it's, you probably won't see it on camera. Yeah. So these hold 33 grams of CO2, but the actual weight of the cylinder itself is 145.5 grams. So you take this down to your favourite supermarket chain, you put it on the veggie scales, or if you have good scales at home, <laughs> oh, they're accurate. And you jot down the weight. Obviously, Maybe if it's those scales that they formed, it just had got on <laughs> I mean, the logic behind it was to decide whether or not it had been discharged. Now, you can kind of tell if it's been discharged by a pinprick hole in the top and the weight, but that's what they tell you to do. Um, Is so that still going to work now you've taken it out? Yes, it will, yes. Yeah. So that's good because you, you're going to give it to me. Oh, this could be. <laughs> I thought we would give this to a, um, a viewer. All know? right, I will give it a bit. Uh, this, right. this jacket that we've got here today that we brought in, uh, you can see that the gas bottle is still full by a red or a green line. Some of the older jackets have a green clip. That's correct, yes. And Might we've had sold. guys come into the shop that have been booked because they've lost the green clip. So when you open it, see if there is a small green clip which is to show that the bottle's been discharged. I'll tell you what, and the next sensible phone call that comes in, none of these inflated boobies or frozen fish. And what was the other one? No. no. How am I trying to talk? Don't <laughs> blow that, that thing. I'm trying to talk. I'm not even touch it. I mean, I'm holding it, but I'm blowing it. What was the first one? Uh, the, the second one was the um, young, handsome fellow from Cranburn, I believe, who bought the tinny. Oh, the tinny. Right, right. The, the, the tuna tower on the floor. Right, the take, don't you call in because you're not getting it. But the first good call that comes in. And you're the gonna, phone number, gonna, if you want to call in, fellas, to win this you're live gonna get jacket. My new, you're going to get 
my new life jacket. Yeah, just life jacket if you want to win anyway, it. Anyway, listen, give us a I, call. I've on got Trevor to, to talk. I want to talk Trevor. Nine seven oh eight two eight four six. Call in, fellas, and you'll win this life jacket. Right now, I think we'd all agree here that if you've got a, if you've got a, you want a life jacket that is you're going to save your life, and you want to put your kids in a life jacket. No, here we have a life jacket. These guys, if you are the, are realistically the the duck scouts, aren't they? Yeah. These are the ones you should be fitting yourself into. These are the ones if you're in a small boat, tinny, something like that that's unstable. Um, these ones will, if you're by yourself, you fall out of your boat, you will save you. If you're by yourself in a six metre boat and you think you're pretty safe, you fall over, hit your head, go overboard. These ones, who's going to pull the cord? These ones, guys, you it's fall already, overboard. It's already automatically done. You, you don't have to worry about it. You're floating, you're safe. Yeah, that's you one thing with, you were talking about if you're by yourself. They sell these life jackets in an automatic. Yes, they and do. There's been problems up north where the boat has rolled, the life jacket goes, goes off because you're in the water and you're caught under the boat and cannot get to the surface. Oh, really? Right, yeah. so, so my advice, my advice, if you do a lot of boating by yourself, buy yourselves one of these. I've got this style, I have this style on my boat, and I've also got my Stormies. When I'm, when, I'm with, when I'm with people on my boat, I wear my Stormy and I wear my Yokes because I know, obviously, you'd be unlucky if three or four of you got knocked out in one game. Yeah, yeah. But uh, these ones by yourself, guys, and, that, and they have them in the kid sizes, they have them in the handles at the back of them so that if you do go over with a child on board, you can grab hold of a handle and you can just rip them back in the boat again. It makes more and more common sense. Else. What I like about those ones too, Trav, I mean, a lot of us are fishing with squid jigs and we're fishing with trebles and sharp implements and obviously even if this is inflated, a small puncture which may not be visible has deemed it basically useless, it, it has deemed it useless. Obviously this you can get it poked, you can get it stabbed, it's still going to float, it's just foam, so well, there you go. I'll be safe. Body armour. <laughs> Way to go fellas. Get one. And where can they actually get these from? Regal? Regal, and, and Borgie, and, and, any and, any, and any good good boating and tackle store. Yep. Uh, no, Mark, look, this is, see, once again, this is information that I, I think a lot, of the, a lot of the people just want to jump on their boat, go out and have a fish, go and have a great day with the family or you know, with their mates and things like that. And the simple thing about a life jacket which can save your life, and you know, as we said before, safety's a must. But on the same token too, you don't want to get down to the boat ramp and you don't want some person to come over and book you and ruin your day and give you a three hundred and eighty dollar mm -hmm. fine when you think or you know you've done the right thing. Yeah. Like I purchased that snobby seas jacket um, for my son to go to Portland. I'm an all good belief that this is brand new um, and it's 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 up to date. And you'll just turn around and go illegal. No. Two thousand well, dollars. Because we're in a game, and we, so we buy ten of those. At the end of the year, we're not going to throw them out. We've well, got to keep them in the shop well, and sell them. So well, neither, neither, neither is Stormy. Them. Mm. Neither exactly. is Stormy, and it's, that's how, what they say: data manufacture. That's when they go, and people just don't realise it, like the salt. Can, can I ask a question? Right? Yeah, like this, like I said, you blokes are all boaties, and I'm just starting to get involved with a little bit with boats, right? And not, you know, like I'm a, back in the old days, mate, when I did have a boat. We didn't have all these laws where we had to have life jackets and never an old Whitley Voyager. So, you know, I didn't, there was none of these laws that were out, right? And um, now I've lost my trust. No, I told you I suffer from senility. I need this. <laughs> and I, and I, reckon, I reckon they should bring this on the pier as well. I know. But I'm getting. Oh yeah, that's that's what that's what oh, I was like. I knew I'd come back to me. See, just give me a second, and my brain starts to work. I right, know. Huh? I think. Now I've lost my trial of thought again. <laughs> I like that from No, no. Nope. Why do we have these states of manufacture? Like, and I know, being a business person, right, mm -hmm. you might go and buy 10 of those and they cost you a lot of money. Right? You've got them stuck on your shelf, right, as excess stock and things like that. Right? Do they ever go off in your shop? Children sometimes. <laughs> no, the, the, the more to the point, more to the no, point is, to that's what Moose said a minute ago, yeah. you, get a fishing oh, book, you get a fishing hook stuck in there, you get something else stuck in there, um, there's more or less chances of someone sticking a, a fish hook into it, hanging yeah. on the shelf in the shop, than it would be. But you will notice the Stormy Seas jackets, when they produce them and things like that, or when they produce those yokes, I just got some from BLA the other day, 
that were uh, a year old. Now, obviously, to make them cheaper, to bring the cost down, they're buying by the thousand now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, you, as I said, if you're in a boat, book it easy, go through them. If you're on the shelf at the shop, no, they won't. Um, just one other thing too, because the police are having a really strong presence down at the ramps at the moment, one of the other little issues too, which boaties are coming unstuck with at the moment too, and this is what I want to pass on, is uh, it had a, we had a case where a charter boat operator pulled into my shop, as you know where launching way is, where the shop is. He's inside of the boat ramp facility. Um, what they normally do is they're running a bit late, they get their bait, their ice, they go through the whole lot, they throw them in the boat, the two deckies hop in the boat, and what's, what happens then is, uh, yeah. he will take off and go over the hill, bang, booked. Travelling in a boat, over a hill and down. Now, come on, let's get fair, let's get fair yeah. thinking about this. The, the, guy, the guys have now got boat catchers, they've got all, all the gear, they're safe, it's, it's safer travelling in that boat than yeah, it is probably car. walking through the car park in the dark, yeah. to be truthful, yeah. so they've all seen drive down there. Yeah, exactly. um, to have that happen. Now, they didn't come down <coughs> Thompson's Road to get in there, all they did was when they were loading the boat, they were getting the rods out, they were preparing themselves to get ready to launch that boat and to get out of everyone's road in a hurry, bang, get slugged with a fine on it. So hopefully they're going to contest this one and hopefully we can make a stand on it. Hopefully we can get yeah. our, our um, governing body, Verfish, behind it to stamp this out. Yeah. But when you go down to Hastings, you see all the time when you see guys coming out of the water, they're sitting in the boat. Yes, they, that's right. It, it might be a busy day at the ramp, okay? And you know, you want to get out of everyone's road, so you might drive around the corner into the car park on the other side. Bang, you're booked. Yeah. Not, not I at, happy I looked, jam. I looked that up to this afternoon as part of something else we were looking up. And it basically comes under road rules of you cannot travel in a trailer or a caravan that is being towed by a vehicle. And unfortunately, a boat comes into the same thing. Well, but you would think that common sense would win here. Well, common sense, when he said to, when I was talking to a person about it who was booking people for it, he, I said, well, when you pull out at ramp number four and you want to clear yourself and come back down and you pull over near ramp number two, he says, well, that's common sense, you're at the ramp. I said, that's further than the shop to there. And he stopped for a minute. Now, he, What's common sense? Yeah, right. As I said, if you look 20 years ago when I first started at the boats, you would say, no, you wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But if you look today on the bridge, the boats, the amount of money people spend on it, and we spend a lot of money on safety and oh, on yeah. our boats and making sure our engines are serviced and all the rest of it, um, come on, give us a break. That's a bit rough. Yeah, yeah. And I, I believe when I get further into it, a lot of people being booked to Portland for the same yes, thing. That was what and if you, if you go to Portland, and you see the queue that goes round by the new ramp and back down again, and to make it flow, and so that the ramp rage doesn't happen, and so everyone's in control. You, you see guys putting rods; they're they're rigging up, they're getting everything ready, just so that when they hit that ramp area, they drive off their trailer because they're not wind off or push off boats with ropes anymore. They're drive off trailers, you know. And to have this antiquated law that we've got now. Yeah. I mean, sure, if they're travelling down the freeway with a couple that, of that, hands on board, yeah, you'd say right. you get what you deserve. Yeah. I'd like to know where it works is public property and the main road. Because we're on a count, we're on a public property that we're just going to the washer or we're going to the bait table just yeah. in the back of our boat. You know, we've dri driven on, got the clip on, the safety's on, he jumps in, drives me up and gets me off the boat ramp so the next guy can come down. Now, I've got another Who's great one. I've now got another great one for you guys because I'm full of this stuff because this has been my... Oh, here go, here this has go. been my quest for the last week and you blow your horn on this one if you want. <laughs> oh, really? This is a good one. <laughs> Moose is holding two of the rubbishy things oh, I've ever seen in my life. Well, hey, they're earrings. Well, back in the 80s, perhaps. Um, I wasn't really around much in the 80s. You guys were. Oh, yeah. Right, these are load rated shackles. Now, a load rated shackle doesn't always have a yellow pin that's just there to help someone spot them in a hardware shop or a tackle shop or wherever they're sold. What makes them a load rated shackle is the stamping. You might want to take one out to the camera. The stamping on the shackle itself. In this case, it's got the brand, which is Titan. And it's got Can you see that, fellas? And these guys are... If you can remember your Roman Catholic for me, three eighths of a ton. How much, sorry, what are, what are these rated to? Sorry, three eighths of a ton. Now, I, this is my this is where I love to my, my my bitch moment. So we go and stick three eighths of a ton onto the back of the car. Are you jealous? Yep. 
Um, we no go. Way. No way. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a kiss. <laughs> no, 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 if you want, I can give you one of them later on. Um, this is this is something that has actually happened to me before, but uh, we now what we do with our boats, we put out our safety chain to the eyelet of the boat. We put our winch strap on. We wind them up, don't we? Yep. And basically, what happened to me coming down the road was. And I also had one that went from the islet of the boat going back to the trailer and I wound it up because I was going to Burmy. Uh, the islet broke off the boat, she clean off. Oh, but right. I dropped the winch, the chain, and everything holding the front of the boat together all dropped on the ground. Now the, uh, the, the islet stainless steel and there's no rating on the, on the chain there. That's another issue which they haven't picked up yet. How Nancy are we gonna get? It's, it's, it's what, what I don't like is that we just don't have a clear answer. Recently, there was a rumour mill generated posts that were going around about a person being fined in Gympie in Queensland. Be it made the case that was in Queensland. We have no jurisdiction and no, I suppose, care because we're not worrying about that. Unless you cruise up to Queensland, in which case, you know, good on you. That's a good trip. I want to go to Queensland. Yeah, it would be bad. Do it driving, I don't know. Uh, Towing up there. Go to Queensland. I, mean, I think that right, right. The, the issue, viewers, is. We could argue to we're blue in the face about why something is stupid or who is right or what even is the law. And we've had a lot of research into this and pages of Australian design law to just try to get an answer. Fact of the matter is, we can't get one. It errs on the side of caution that the police officer uh, or even Transport Safety Victoria, whoever looks at you in your trailer, it's there judgment call. Or well, we can argue then and there, fact of the matter is it's probably not going to get us out of a fine. It's probably give you You've a fine. You've got an issue on that. Because like if you go, if you go to buy a brand new boat, yep. now nine times out of ten, they don't supply you with these. Now it's a poor boat owner who buys a boat, just so all of a sudden pulls out of there and all of a sudden the police pulls him up and gives him a fine. Yeah, look, it's a yeah, real, that's real. It. Well, I'd, I'd even, I'd even go to one further. If you need to have that to hang your boat to the back of your car, yep. then once a boat leaves the car, in my case, on my six metre boat, my braking system comes in on my trailer, my automatic brakes come in. Now, if I rate my, if I rate my <coughs> chain to the back of my car so that the automatic brakes don't come on and it's stuck to the back of the car, no brakes in the trailer going on and it's career and me and my car down the road, how does that work? Mm. What are automatic brakes for? Are these overriding the automatic brakes we've got on? Exactly. As I said, or is it we've got breakaway chains on the trailer? We, we, we've got to come up with some sort of rationale to what we're doing. And if we start making them too hard, then, you know, where well, is I'm, this I'm all happy for if a government body, because Lord knows they love making up new laws. That's, that's what they get paid for, I suppose. They've got to keep their jobs. If they said, right, from January 1st, 2015, everyone needs one of these, fine. Just tell us that. Right? Exactly, exactly. Now, it can go in the big bag of laws of just stupidity, because um, there's a heavy bag, you know. <laughs> it's not, not that big, it's that big. It's <laughs> that wide. Exactly. And, that, and it's, all pointed, it's all pointed at responsible boat owners. Yes, thank you. And I'm glad you mentioned the responsible thing. At the end of the day, I think a lot of us out here, we are responsible, but there are obviously people who really need a kick in the ass. And, and maybe not necessarily He talks because, like me, I like it. Well, maybe not necessarily because they are bad people, they want to do the wrong thing, they just might not know. I but think I know. generally fishermen, and I'm putting myself in this hat, we're very proud people. We're not the sort of people to willingly ask something if we don't know the answer. Um, <laughs> ego is a big thing. And I'm the same, I, I'm terribly guilty oh, no, of that. I'm just, I'm just scratching your head. Here you go. I think if, if we all start asking each other questions, and thankfully social media has made that quite easier and harder, uh, it would get us understanding the only weak link, get it, weak link, yeah. <laughs> weak link. is the actual government organisations. They just not come into the table. I mean, even to the point where we, as a, in the marine industry, should be getting letters every single time the most minute law changes, so then we can pass it on. Unfortunately, we have too many departments that don't well, talk to each other. Well, even go further than that, just, make, just actually clarify what we've got Thank at the moment. Yep. Just clarify what we've got. And try not to make, make us look like we're uh, lawbreakers, because we're not. Yeah. We're just, we're, 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 we're trying to I, run. I actually yeah. see 
that many boats every year, and I must admit there are a couple that are absolute Barry Crockers. They're shockers. <laughs> right? And I have no sympathy for people. One of the things I've gotten rid of the ramp and is, is jumper leads. I will not have jump starters and I will not have jumper leads. Because one of the best things of the boat ramp is, mate, my battery's been flat, it started last night, but I went to the boat ramp this morning and it's starting, you've got jumper leads. So you say, yeah, I've got jumper leads, I'll jump start you. Next minute you know, they've gone out there, they've turned it off, there's something wrong with their battery, it's gone flat, the wind's blowing up, you nearly killed me. <laughs> How do you wheel that out? Because you gave me the jump start. Yeah. So yeah. if you've got problems with your batteries and things like that, do you think really by going out on a flat battery is going to do any good to you? No. So you're better off pulling the boat out and saying, oh, well, go to McDonald's, have breakfast, and then then go home and sort the problem out. It could yeah. be a short somewhere. It could be a lot of things. So the other thing to that is, guys who's got boats out there got a problem, they should you know, check it before they even leave home. Yeah, you know, we've got to crank it over. Right. To Listen, I'm, I'm going to, we're pushing on for time. This is just fantastic. Listen, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Right, I want to get you both back in because I think this is a great big no, it subject. Is fantastic. It is a fantastic subject because, like I said, safety is a must, right? Yep. And you know, boating is, is a dangerous sport, although it's a great sport if you do the wrong things. Yeah, and, and Glenn, the boys right. from Tea Tree before were whispering here a huge one uh, amongst boaties is boated, boaty etiquette. The etiquette. Now, this is something yeah. Trevor would say, yeah, which is seven all the days time. a week. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, like oh, I'd love to keep going with this one, but you know we're going to run out of time. Like, hey, what if, what's that? Get us back in, and we'll actually talk, uh, have a big long talk in the next couple of weeks or so about. The, I reckon we need someone in from Marine Safety Victoria yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Right? That's all. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. That's, right. a, that's a good one. And, and actually have them sit yeah, down and answer an the answer. questions. Right. So right. Marine let's Safety, let's I know you're watching. Yeah. Right, was, we're was, after you. Yeah, my, yeah. Come on board and here. explain. Yeah, we have Moose and Trevor here again. Just really yeah. quickly, I know we're in pressure time. I just want to publicly say, um, cheers, Trevor, for last week at Maid's Day. Oh, that's yeah. 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 Woo. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. 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 Hang on, guys. Wait a minute. It's not me. No, no. Yeah, but it's, it, 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 it's your organisation. The, the, the day's called Maid's Day, and I want to congratulate all the people that came down and donated their boats, their time. Exactly. The, the behind scenes of the, uh, the, the fish care, the lifters, the people that put the in the boat. The carers, the families. The, 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 the whole lot. The, yeah. the, the people that actually want to participate in the day. Yeah. It was, it, it's, it's never been owned by one person or one thing. It's owned by everyone. And everyone says, oh, congratulations, because I, it's at the Patterson River Boat Ramp, and that's my place of employment. But it's not. It's something we've got to make sure it's there for the next 20 to 30 years. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter who's running the ramp, whether they put ticket machines or anything like that. It's got to be done Abs forever. Absolutely. Because it's too much of a great day to ever. Uh, just to see, yeah, like, it, and I, you'll have to agree because I, I, I know myself, just to see one of those people, right, with a smile on their face. Yeah, that's the thing about fishing, as, as you know, is all about, you know, looking. And my, our cat's slogan is, changing lives one life at a time right and that's what we're all about and that's what you know mates day is that one day just changing their life just for that one day putting happiness into it yep. it was just fantastic and what we're all about we're every day we're yeah we we, we sorry take, i'm we saying take, that but we're every day we take what we've got so much for granted yeah, absolutely and, and you know what i really like to applaud everybody that came down that day and, and put in because i tell you what it makes a fantastic day uh, to organise the 70 boat owners that want to volunteer their time, to the 198 guests that came yeah. down there from Hobson's Bay to doing the barbecues. Yeah, yeah, it was that was the well, fantastic. To, to, even, to even to we had five or six boat owners that were sitting there until about 10 o'clock just waiting in case um, anyone came down that was missing out on it. Yeah. You know, and you, know, you talk to me and say, look, you know, we're sorry you're not going out. Who cares? Mm. We've got more boats than we had people this year because some groups get sick, they, you know, yeah. There's all sorts of problems in life that we don't experience, they do. And what a fantastic day. It was, it was Trent, great. And it's taken off Trent, by a lot of good people. Before we go any further, Trent, thank you. Oh, I'm a boat owner, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. No, it's not it was a fantastic day. It As was really, really well. And plus to my dicky. Oh. oh, there he is! <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a, a duo. I don't know what Glenn is going to say to this. <laughs> I don't you know what you're going to say to this. We're going to go to a commercial break. Yeah, we're going to go to a commercial break. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll that's be back. the thing about fishing. We're going to go for a commercial break. We're live at Belmore And we're going to come back. Help, I'm too nervous. <laughs> With don't a fishing report. Don't forget right. the pink lipstick. The pink lipstick. <laughs>
G'day, I'm Paul from Mornington Boat Hire. For four hours, $90, you too can come out fishing on a boat. Either a polycraft or a tinny, we'll get you on the water and we'll get you on the fish. This little beauty was actually caught out on wanting to hire boats, so thank you, Paul. I keep fishing affordable, so don't get stuck on a pier. Come down to Mornington and I'll get you out fishing from here. In a world full of quality TV, award-winning screenplays, and really attractive people, comes a show with None of that. Coming soon. I caught it on Seaford Bait. Right, welcome back to um, That's the Thing About Fishing and Guru Glenn. And friends, look, I've got a whole yeah. lot of friends. Yeah, you've got a lot of friends. <laughs> I, I, I started off with none. No, you actually started off with two. No, but a couple of weeks ago, I started oh, well, with none. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there you go. Again. you got some friends. No, no, when. No, no, when. Oh, no, when. Some do you know I was going to be a singer once, but I just didn't want to be a sex symbol? <laughs> <laughs> so I actually took over a tenor voice and sung 10 or 20 miles away so no one could hear me. Anyway, what we're going to do now, we're actually going to go over to Mornington and have a fishing report from Mornington. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, this is Guru Glenn. We're actually live at Mornington Pier. And what, I've got Kevin Johnson's permission to come down and actually do our fishing report with Paul from Mornington Boat Hire, actually on the new part of the pier. Um, I've, I'll show you later a little, just a little bit of what's been done here, but it look, it's looking good, isn't it, Paul? It certainly is. It's coming along really well. It's going to be a really good regional facility for both boating and fishing and scuba diving. Planned things are a low-level access, wave screens for harbour protection, and also a swim through for the divers. It's going to be a proper harbour set up again like it was back in the 1920s. New improved yeah. parking, the whole lot. It's going to be awesome, guys. Oh, it's going to be great. Anyway. That's enough about the engineering side of stuff. Absolutely. We're here for a fishing report. As I said, Paul's from uh, Mornington Boat Hire, one of my great sponsors that I've got at the, on board. Now, Paul, give me some reports around this area. All right, so we'll start in close. In close here in Mornington, we are starting to see a few whiting moving around. Oh. It's really good. The water temperature's getting up. Have a look around Fishies Beach and also off the front of Mills Beach. Same areas, we're seeing some squid. They've been quiet the last few weeks, but just starting to pick up now. Can be a bit hard on an east wind, only due to the direction of the drift, not so much the east, least and all that sort of rubbish. Got nothing to do with it, it's ne nearly always to do with which way the boat's facing and which way you're drifting. Other things, moving out into the deeper waters. We've got a nice reef just behind here at Mornington, behind Snapper Point, it is holding some lovely pinkies and the occasional fish up to about three kilo. Moving out into the deeper waters from all the way from Frankston right the way through to Mount Martha. Those that are fishing 16 to 18 and a half metres are seeing some great snapper. You might require to sound around for about 5 to 10 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer, but find a school of fish. Move on, mark it on your GPS, come back, have a look. If those fish are still in that area, give it a crack. Get the burly going and uh, you should do quite well. That's pretty well much it for my section of Port Phillip Bay. But heading over into Western Port Bay over at Yoringa Harbour, we're seeing some lovely gummy sharks coming in. We had some fish up to around about 7.5 kilo this week, and we're seeing good snapper as well in those deeper sections. 
It's the old saying that we used to have up in the territory as well, no run, no fun. So fish that tide change and halfway through when that water's really moving we're seeing some great snapper. Fresh baits, make sure that sinker's on the bottom and if you've got burley, make sure it's on your anchor rope so your burley is around your baits. See, good points there, good, you know, like that's some of the things that we want to actually teach people when we go fishing. Um, I was just over you over in Warneet and we're talking about, it's actually going to be a, a low tide changes this, this weekend. Can you give some ideas about what's going to happen over the weekend? Yeah, look, over the weekend in both places we've got some nice fishable weather. It might be a little bit overcast, but on the current forecast and synoptic chart it's looking really nice. So be prepared. Make sure you've got a jacket and sunscreen and your sunglasses and hat. Even though it might be a bit chilly, you can still get burnt on these days. Also with your tides, know your tides. As Glenn was saying, we've got what are called neap tides. They're a smaller tide change and sometimes they can fish well, other times they can fish a bit harder. It's once again, you've got to be on the water to win it, but sometimes those neap tides, they're either gold or bust. It depends on where you're fishing. If it's really slow and the fish are in that area and you can't get them to bite, no matter what you do, pull the pin, move, find another spot. Somewhere they're eating, somewhere they're hungry. And I know the land base is a little bit harder, right, but I've heard of the bite times at the moment for land base fishing, especially along the rocks here at Mornington, I've heard, you know, up to about nine, you know, early morning, up to about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, it's a great time to fish for bite, you know, like along the, the, uh, wall, uh, the rocks along and everything, the rocks, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, also the, the, the little bit of pier here. Also, haven't I ever heard that's catching fish in the harbour here, is that not they? Been seeing some really good fish in the harbour, even when these big easterlies are getting up, just out past the pier there, you're fishing in 12 to 13 metres of water, but you're only 200 metres off the coast. We've had some nice snapper come in there over the last week, and they've been up to up to six kilos, so that's it's a really good sign. The reason these fish come in at land based and in close is they're following the old fault line and Yarra River bed up. Oh, that's great. Well, this is um, Paul from Mornington Boat Hire. You want a boat? He's probably one of the the best price I've actually known or seen around on the on the um, Port Phillip Bay. So come down and see Paul, telling Guru Sancha. And you never know, he'll look after you, won't you, Paul? Absolutely, we'll get you on the water and on the fish. Till next week, Glenn. Yeah, till next week. Keep fishing. We'll, we'll see you next week. Bye now. That was Paul at Mornington. Anyway, this is our, what we call, everyone's going to have a mailbag. That's right. And, and the I've only got job, mail. I know, you've got mail. I've got mail, I've got a few questions here, so. Really? Let's run through three of them. Right on then. Okay, um, and this one here is from Mario and Hastings. Uh, where can I catch big squid land based in Western Port? Right. Now that'd be a question for you. How long we got? Yeah. Alright, who's, who's the Western Port? I'd say the Flinders Pier. Oh, yeah. That's right. I was, was going to say here. Every time. Every time. Ah. Flinders Pier, that's probably yeah. the best. Although, although, starting point, point. Yeah. yeah. But although I've heard, under a float, the summer's at the right times. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, okay. I've got a friend of mine, um, Megsy. I don't, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll yeah, Mexi. Yeah, yeah. right, the man that could cast an overhead, right. mate. I've never seen a bloke cast an overhead so quick. Yeah, but I'll uh, catch a ferry over to Tankerton. Yeah, Tankerton yeah. too, yeah. yeah I've also awesome. been to uh, surf runs off Red Rocks. That's, yes. Yep. Yeah, definitely get down to spots. New Haven. Oh, there you go. There you go. Look, there's the answer to that one. Right, right. Oh, Jeez, right. that was And then um, this, is one, this one here will be for you, there, uh, Mr. Morning. Guru. Right. Uh, why aren't there many garfish at Frankston anymore? And who wrote oh, that one? But this that? one here is from Alana from Seaford. Alana from yeah. Seaford. Elena. Elena from oh, Seaford. Right, right. right. Well, listen. This is my opinion on my theory, anyhow. Right. So Frankston and Seaford have been great gar fishing pairs. You know, I've got. I remember, the, you know, 30 years ago we go down there and fish it. And we've come out with bucket loads of them. Even over the last few years, we've been going down there to um, catch gars. But in the last couple of years, and it's my opinion, and I stand to be corrected, because right, I'm never very often wrong. Right. <laughs> just <laughs> ask you. Yeah, no, just <laughs> ask me. Exactly. I was wrong, right. Exactly. I was right. Over the last couple of years or so, we've. Yeah, look, and I don't know. People, I was talking to a couple of people today about how clean the beef, the water is, and everything like that are. And you know, like once again, my opinion is I believe the water is actually coming faster through since the dredging. There's another whole subject in its own, right? Uh, um, but we've seen an enormous amount of more salmon coming through. Once before, years ago, and I, you, you probably don't agree with me this trip. Salmon are always mainly around about the 800 grams to a half a kilo sort of thing. But we're starting to see. You know, like remember the beginning of the yeah, year, yeah. mate? We were, 
we were fishing down there, yeah. and we were catching nearly three kilo salmon off Frankston Pier yeah. Yeah. on surf rods. Yeah. Right, eh? And I believe what the guards have done, they're still here. Right? There's areas where they've been, you know, like there's a couple of little s secret spots, X, X, yeah. X spots. No, right, right. <laughs> now, there's, there's areas that you can still go and get guards, but I'm, you know, like, like I said, I stand to be correct. I believe what's happened is that you know, fish, got, fish have got half a brain sometimes. Why go, and, why go and hang around the Frankston Pier when you've got these dirty big fish that are coming in to eat me? Right? And like everything, you know, like I, said, I believe to me, salmon, you've got to eat it on the day. But you open them up, and all you'll see was baby gars and gars fishing and things like that. And um, you know, like there's some big salmon out there. And I, I think so that, that's yeah. part of the reason. Oh, no. Am I right? I'm wrong. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. Oh, no. I'm right. I can't. I can't disagree. That you said you're always right. I know. I remember the next version. This one and here. I, anyone can ring in and say I'm wrong. Just one more thing on that though, quickly. Water temperature has a lot to do with a lot of species. Yeah, it too. does. It, yeah. And water temperature every year is not the same every yeah, time. That's right. Season. And that, that's a whole. Yeah. You know, once again, they're going to take all night to talk about yeah, that one. Anyway, no well, education. Okay. This one here is for a couple of us here because this is a classic. Because my son even asked me this. A few weeks ago, this is from Reese and Moynton. Why do they call Glenn the Guru? Ah, now, my well, son asked yeah. me that. We went out in the boat one day, Glenn, my son, and myself, and um, my son outfished Glenn. And he, by a tadpole. And he asked me, he actually asked me, why do they call him the guru when he doesn't catch any fish? <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. So, and, um, he, and he's... Jerry's, <laughs> Jerry's thinking, yeah? Oh, oh, oh there we go. That would be your son on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I reckon it could be your well, son. <laughs> Name the speaker. 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 Hello, this is Guru Glenn. What do you want to ask me a question to? Hello. Hello. This is Tom from Spring Wales. Yes. Hey, Tom. Wales. Yeah, go on, Tom. Uh, we catch lots of garfish. Do you? Where? The bay. In the bay. <laughs> Whereabouts on the bay? Oh, we use nets. Maybe three kilometres. Well, well, well. That, that's, that, I think that's a no-no. <laughs> I think that's a, I think that is a big no-no. That's where all your gars are gone. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, right. anyway give me back to the Tommy, what, what do you think? What are they, you know? Why well, the that, that's, a, that, that's a tough one. Because he's always saying, you know, he does a lot of land-based fishing in, in uh, Mornington and uh, Frankston Pier and... He's catching all these fish, or fush, as you would call it. <laughs> fush. But, but lately, um, I've taken him out a fair few times on the boat, and I haven't seen anything he's pulled in. Well, I'll tell you, I'll so, tell you, do you know what the whole story is? Right, and I'll tell you the truth. I've got to make it really quick. Right, it wasn't me that actually called me the guru. Right? It was the producer a couple of years ago. Producer? Oh. Right, I, when I went out there and I caught an eight kilo off Mornington Pier on the end of the rock wall, and I think the next week I went out, out of one of the charter boats, and I caught an eight kilo on the charter boat. It was exactly a week to the thing, and then I went back in, and I caught another seven kilo on the Mornington Pier. Like, and anyway, <laughs> and I got the photos on Facebook to prove it, so you can go on to Facebook and have a look. Was that for right right fish? Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you, like I said, and I've got the photos to prove it on Facebook, yeah. 35 fish off the piers land base last year. Right, and I've got the photos to prove it. Yeah, and you counted them up. I did. Some of them I thought they looked like they were They would look like they were frozen. You saw them up and they were gathered. No, they were frozen. And then I've only caught 15 this year. I've got it's just a thing in my shop for you. What's that? It's called a whopper stopper. Oh, whopper stopper. But I've got the photos. Have you seen the whopper stoppers? No, I haven't seen Do you know what a whopper stopper is? No, tell me. It's a piece of wood that's that long, and it's got a hole there and a hole there, and you put your fingers in it, like that, and it stops you from growing a bit. They started at two kilo, and there they're eight. Where's my mobile phone? I'll show you. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, listen, we kind of wind it up, and look, we can sit here, and all we can, night. Yeah, you know, exactly. like, we, we honestly could, yeah, you know, like, and it's been great. You know, like, the boys from Snapper Point, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Regal Marine. Greg Russell. Yeah, Russell. Mr. Russell. Yeah, 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 Russell. Hey, Canoey! <laughs> right, eh? Knew he's a great mate. Right, eh? Listen, uh, next Thursday night, is it? Yeah, next yes, Thursday is. night. Yep. At, um... Mitchum. Mitchum, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's Mitchum, it. Mitchum, that's it. Thanks for reminding me. Mitch, <laughs> Senna Nellie, he's still here. Right, Mitchum um, Angling Club. I'm doing a land-based snapper tour. Right, so, and 
So it's Guru Glenn. That's the thing about fishing with friends is doing a snapper talk. Right, and then um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do too in the next couple, next week or so. I'm going to um, work out a day and like I'm, and watch Facebook because we've got our own page. That's yeah, the thing about that's, Facebook. Yeah, that's the thing about fishing. Well, if you want to come and join, because well, what like, I'm going to do, I'm going to put my money Facebook. where my mouth is, right? I'm going to put money where my mouth is. And if you're hurting out there, right, and you want to learn how to fish or that you're a fisherman, then you're going through a hard time, right? And I know I've got the gig of birdies at the back of me. <laughs> right, what do they do? They go, yeah. Well, you never know. Well, you won't know until later right, on. I'll, I'll see it on camera later. Right, uh, but it, like I said, one of the things about, that's the thing about fishing, is, is working, changing lives one life at a time and using yeah. fishing as a, as a therapeutical way of changing lives. Right, and if you're hurting out there, you're a man or a female, I don't care, and, and you want someone to talk to or come down, I'm going to start actually name, one day a week subject to weather. Right, and I'm, and I want to, look, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If you're out there, I'm going to start at this Saturday. I was going to go with you fishing yep. at uh, Western Port. I'm hanging out there because we've got what we call the low tide. You see, that's going to be a fantastic time to go fishing at Western Port. I'll give you a call while I'm out there. Yeah, that'll be right. Tease me. I'm going to be at Frankston Pier on Saturday morning from about 6 o'clock till about 11 o'clock. You want to come down and have a talk, meet me and things like that. Hopefully a couple of the crew might be there. Oh, yeah, you're no, working. I'm working. Mate, someone's got to work. Um, Ash, the producer, might be there, you because I'm going to put my money with, I'm going to prove that fishos, right, are people that love people, and we, we're there to help people. And I know I've got people in the background laughing again. Before, before, <laughs> oh, before, anyway, before, before we go further we'll go. on, before we go, <laughs> I just want to thank, hold on, yeah, fellas, hold on, I just want to thank Trevor. Guys, if you ever go down to Launch and Way, Trevor here and all these uh, crew there will help you out with bait, so you know, you know, they use seafood bait. One of our mates' yeah. sponsors. Exactly. Wells yeah. well, yeah. also has got this called uh, Burley. Called Bite me Burley. Bite, Bite me Burley. Burley. If you ever right. go there, pick up one of those and uh, and he'll point you in the right direction. I'll tell you what. What? What's that? Oh, don't worry about free launch. No, no, we don't no, do no. that. No, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I also want to thank the yeah, guys at Regal Marina as well for coming yeah, in. Thanks, And Moose. same, same yeah. deal. If he's ever going down to their shop, go see Moose. Go see Dave, go look hey, after what, what, what And also, the tea tree guys, fantastic. Welcome aboard, yeah. and uh, we'll be uh, hopefully out there uh, filming it next week. We've got more stuff. Right. And we'll take it from there. Anyway, next week, we want to see some photos going on. That's the thing about fishing's Facebook. And this is Guru Glenn and friends signing off. It's been a great night. I'm sorry we've gone over time, but that's the thing about fishing. Even here, we just keep going. See you later. Hey, Terry. See you, Terry.